title for the very first time in front of his home fans against a man who comes from the Philippines, the challenger Reggie Sugra. This is the Powered Cut International Lightweight Fight. Romeo Makwako up against Natamba Blom is scheduled for six rounds. Another international fight in the super middleweight division. Alex Kabangu up against Asema Velem. The fight is scheduled for 10 rounds. And then the SA throwaway title fight between Sia Kolwa Kuse and Bangi Nyangani. It is scheduled for 12 rounds. More boxing. Melissa Miller up against Radin Fortin for the South African female bantamweight title fight scheduled for 10 rounds. George Candelo in the international fight up against Jantan Tiham in the June flyweight division scheduled for 10 and then the main fight, IPF Junior Flyway title fight. The challenger from the Philippines, it's Reggie Sugano up against the local man. See, Snet is a young man. Nching Ngila, of course, is a non-chinga who is the champion. Blom at the scales, the official way in. Yesterday he held him at the ICC. Boxers in superb condition physically and no one had to run to try and make the weight limit in the last minute. This is the tail of the tape. Makwakwa is 25 years old. Snetemba Blom is 30 years old. Look at the weight then. Makwakwa at 63.05. Blom at 61 kilograms. Slight reach advantage there from Makwakwa who has 21 fights with a 29% knockout ratio. Snetemba Blom two fights, a win and a loss. This fight is scheduled for eight rounds to get us underway and to bring the boxers into the ring. The man at the center of the ring is our ring announcer, Lucky Makilene. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Rumble Africa Boxing Promotions in conjunction with the National Department of Sport, Recreation, Arts and Culture, Eastern Cape Department of Sport, Recreation, Arts and Culture, Parks and Tourism, La Grato, Olegado Holdings, ICT Choice, Super Sport, the World of Champions. Now let's welcome our first bound into the ring. Into the blue corner, ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome all the way from Emalawi, Romeo Makwakwa. Romeo Makwakwa from Lilongwe. <laughs> Fights out of the orthodox storms. Been a professional boxer since the year 2016. In his last fight, he lost to Mantengu earlier this year in February at a fry head. Fight that was scheduled for four rounds, he lost on points. And now, ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome his opponent into the red corner, Sinatemba Blom. Blom, from Stutterheim. Uh, stays in Tanun in Cape Town. His last fight ended in defeat to Kane Kuri uh, in October 22 at the gallery in Sanji in a fight that was scheduled for six rounds. He lost on points. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the lightweight bound schedule for six rounds. Brought to you by Rumble Africa Boxing Promotions in conjunction with the National Department of Sport, Recreation, Arts and Culture, Eastern Cape Department of Sport, Recreation, Arts and Culture, and Super Sport, the World of Champions. The official for this bound, ladies and gentlemen, judges, Tandine Godwana, Stembele Tom, and Mandy Mgile. When the bell rings, the third man in the ring is Simpiwe Geba. And now, 
Introducing our boxers the fighting along the blue corner. Wearing black trunks, he tipped the scale at 63.05 kgs. With 21 fights under his belt, seven wins, one draw, 13 losses, and six by means of knockout. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome all the way from Malawi, Romeo Makwakwa. His opponent, ladies and gentlemen, fighting around the red corner. He weighs 61 kgs, wearing black silver and red trunks, with two fights, one win and one loss. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you, from Stato Ram, Stamba Blum. This part, ladies and gentlemen, is sanctioned and approved by Boxing South Africa. Boxers. I'm joined at ringside by my co-commentator, Grant Bissett. Good afternoon, Grant. Afternoon, Pomlani. Looking forward to uh, this one in the lightweight division. Sintetema Blom. Uh, surprising, I guess, to see a boxer at 30 years of age having only had two professional fights, but a lengthy amateur career behind him. Uh, almost 500 amateur fights. So a lot of experience in that regard. Round one. This is round number one. Makwaka against Blom. I've seen the South African uh, keeping his hands a little lower than this in a previous fight against Kane Faree, which he did lose over six rounds, but it's a pretty good prospect that he did lose to. Had him wobbled in the final round ultimately lost on decision and does seem to have his guard a little higher than uh, in that previous fight already here. It's an early start. It's a quick start to this fight by both boxers. Blom on the attack. Makwakwa tries to come out quick out of the, of the corner. Oh. When I said break, don't hit. Eh? Wait for me, okay? Box Just up. after the referee had said break, he comes out punching. Blom piling on the pressure. It's the jab that may set it up for him, but now and again, then they get too close, and then it's problems for Makwakwa. Well, he's already on the defense, defensive, and he, was, he is riding a fairly lengthy losing streak. The last time he fought in the Eastern Cape was against the talented Southpaw Azinga Fuzile. That was last year. KO'd in round three on the receiving end of a beautiful uppercut. He's the one who's initiating the clinching, They're holding a little bit more. There is the jab from a Blom no, McKay and Makwakwa in trouble. Sometimes you get the sense that Makwakwa doesn't see some of the punches coming through. He's been susceptible in the past to accumulation of body shots, which then usually leads to openings a, a little later in the bout. As long as Blom boxing behind the jab, Makwako will have his work cut out. Jab again. Last 10 seconds of round number one. End of round one.
Already you do see when uh, Makwaka is on the offensive, which has been a little infrequently. At maximum, he's throwing a one-two. He's not throwing combinations, and it's something that has been evident in previous fights as well. There's a, a limitation in that regard. Round number two. Makwaka against Tom. Tries to counter there with the left hand on job, doesn't land. Makwakwa's good to try and establish some kind of authority with the jab. Lots of wasted movement and a non-existent jab. Putting everything into those body shots. Does show he's done his whole thing. He's clearly watched Makaka's last outing. He's breaking him down to the but Makaka tries to fight back, but he hasn't landed. Oh, that is the body punch. Big right hand. He's gone down. The count is up to five. Up at seven. There's so much time left in this round, though. It's a left hook from Makwakwa thrown with an open glove. He's done for the second time in the fight. He's got to go to the neutral corner. There, Blom. Counting up to five. Just under 40 seconds left in the round. I goes down. Referee was jumping in to stop the fight, and there he is. Mouth guard is off. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. There are those. Ah, oh, it's over. It's a good and a correct call by the referee. Well, he was horribly, horribly outmatched in that fight. And Cindy uh, Temba Blom might have been coming off a loss in just his second fight, but it was against another good prospect. He has a wealth of experience behind him. Remember, he's represented South Africa at the Commonwealth Games only five years ago. Um, and I guess making a fairly decent start to his pro career as he tries to play a bit of catch-up. He ended the fight in style too. Often always we say in boxing, chop the body and the head will fall. Here it comes. His jab certainly looking a lot crisper than uh, previous outings. It's seen him flinging it from the hip hands a little lower so something that they've uh, worked on interestingly he wanted to turn pro in uh, 2019 but they were holding out for the tokyo olympics which he didn't end up uh, going to so as previously stated making a little bit of a late start to the pro career but uh, certainly on the right track what truly like a man who is in a hurry We're just waiting for the official time of this stoppage. 
from our ring announcer, Lucky Emma Akeleni. Lucky Makeleni is ready for the official time of the stoppage. Ladies and gentlemen, our referees in Puig, they will stop the fight in two minutes, 38 seconds in the second round. And the winner by knockout is Snetamba Blom. Back to winning ways. Snetamba Blom. Two minutes, 38 seconds, the official time of the stoppage. There's more boxing still to come right here on your World of Champions. Alex Kabangu up against Asamate Vele. Welcome back to the International Convention Centre. We are in East London. It's Rumble Africa promotions. This is the uprising, the return of World Championship Boxing. In the main event, the IPF Junior Flyway title fight. Nanjinga, the champion. Suganov, the challenger from the Philippines. Our next fight, of course, Features Alex Kabangu against Asemate Velem. Kabangu is 33 years old. Velem is 22 years. Made his debut in 2021. Kabangu in 2017. And their records will tell you a story of both fighters then. Well, you see Kabangu at 33, Velem at 22. Look at their uh, record. And coming into this fight, you'll then be able to pick who you like to win. Now, Kabango 13 fights with 6 wins, 4 losses, 3 draws, 2 KOs with a 15% knockout ratio. Look at Amate then. Asamate is unbeaten in 5 professional fights. The who is who of boxing was gathered the way in. And there was tension that you could cut with a knife yesterday at the official way in. I'm also looking around the arena. 
I see the premier of the province is here. He's talking to Masibulele, Hawk, Makepula, even as we speak. They are in deep, deep conversation. There it is, Oscar Mabuyane. And I look to my right, uh, Hawk Makepula, former champion of the world, of course, an IPF champion, uh, welcome Nita is here. Former IPF champion, Masibulele Hawk, Buyane Pungu is also ringside. The who is who of boxing is gathered here. Well, let's continue though with the live boxing. Our ring announcer, Lucky Makeleni, is all but set to bring in the fighters for the second fight. Ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome into the ring our next bout, scheduled for 10 rounds in the... scheduled for 10 rounds. First, into the ring, ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome, all the way, from DRC, Alex Kabambu. Uh, Alex Kabangu might not have the most impressive record, but he's incredibly durable. He's never been stopped. So I think that will be on the mind of Willem today. He wants the stoppage. He did speak about it in the lead up to this fight. And it is a really good test for him against the DRC native. Who has previously been in there with divisional standouts, the likes of uh, Rowan Campbell and uh, Reno Liebenberg. Uh, I remember watching that ringside, the, the fight against Liebenberg just before the COVID pandemic thoroughly outboxed in Blair Gowrie. So there is a, a slight limitation to his skill set, but it's still a good test for the current champion. And now, ladies and gentlemen, let's also welcome his opponent from Ekinza, Asema Vele. Well, a perfect record to start his professional career. And perhaps we might be seeing something a little different from him this afternoon. He recently changed gyms uh, as recently as March. He's now under the former SA Bantamweight champ, Pumzile Machila, fighting out of uh, Fight Sports Center. So his career trajectory changing ever so slightly, but we'll see what he's able to produce. Still a very young man. And actually, in just his sixth fight, fighting for the third time against an opponent from the DRC. Oftentimes, fighters don't just want to walk if they don't get their music. If he doesn't hear the song that he picked for his ring walk, results in the type of hesitation that you've just seen. He's a prospect, one for the future, without a shadow of a doubt. This is William. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the super middleweight scheduled for 10 rounds, brought to you by Rumble Africa Boxing Promotions in conjunction with the National and Eastern Cape Department of Sport, Recreation, Arts and Culture, Pakate Project Managers, Ayaliwe Projects, and ICT Choice and Buffalo Toyota and Super Sport, the world of champions. Our officials for this bout, ladies and gentlemen, judges, Mandis Mkile, Ellen Matakane, and Simpiwe Keba. When the bell rings, the dead man in the ring is Lulamam Kya. Introducing our boxers, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing red trunks, he weighs 76 kgs, with 13 fights under his belt, six wins, three draws, four losses, and two knockouts. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome, all the way from DRC, Alex Kabongo. His opponent, ladies and gentlemen, pointing out of the red corner. He tipped the scale at 75.55 kgs undefeated in five fights. He's wearing white and pink trunks. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you all the way from Ekinza Asema Velembu. This month, ladies and gentlemen, is sanctioned and approved by Boxing South Africa. Boxers, 
Asimate Velem Kabangu receiving their final instructions from referee Lamanka. Keep this fight clean as much as possible. Shake hands. Good luck to both of you, man. Thank you. One of the best in the land in terms of ring officials. Lula Amamke. In fact, I've seen his brother walking around ringside here. Top, top trainer. Lois Amamke. He's here. He's in the arena. Amamke starts with the... He starts with the jab. Solid left jab. So Pumlani Bafa, the... Uh, the biggest fighters on the card and a bull that's dominated by the uh, smaller weight classes. It's a trend in this part of the land. For the longest period of time, the man who was fighting out of the heavier division from the Eastern Cape was Mpush Makanda. Problems early in the fight for Alex Kabandu. He's got to gamble, he's got to risk it. Why? He's got to try and get past that long jab from Asimati. He lands it with so much authority, so you know there's a right hand behind it. <laughs> it's good to see him get a decent test like this. His last outing against the Zimbabwean uh, Tinashe Zehove is horribly outmatched. There was his opponents. Of the KO in uh, round two to Willem. That was at the end of October, only about a month after winning the SA title, which he still holds. It's choice, it's selection of punches by Willem that is always impressive in his fights. He hardly ever wastes energy, ever wastes punches. Makes the opening patient enough to wait for the right opening, and then he lands. And he's finished three of his five previous bouts. The two instances where okay, he's not been able to get the stoppage were against, uh, also against DRC opponents. In his third fight against Jason Medi, it's actually aged really well. That was Medi's debut, and uh, he's now 3-0 since then. Uh, Kabango attempts a move that's going to pay dividends for him in this fight. It's a risky move, but it's the only way he gets closer. Head movement side to side. He's got to get on the inside. As long as he allows the jab to keep on touching him from long range, gonna stay out of range and not be able to throw any significant punches. Okay, break. Break. Boxing sanctioned by Boxing South Africa. Promoter Rumble Africa Promotions. We actually uh, won the award of Promoter of the Year in 2019 and talking about promoter of the year boxing awards this past okay. friday really? held in Devon. ayanda matiti congratulations Tamas. boxing promoter okay, of the year civil anti nanjing of course the man who's in the main fight Alpha fighter of the year kafu chawuge fight of the year abim nisi matchmaker of the year as a look at the action from the Opening round here, there is an open glove then a, from a, a Kabangu, and uh, we congratulate all the winners. Sifa Mashiro, a, a ring announcer of the year, and uh, Pumeza Zenagile is the ring official of the year, and uh, uh, congratulations to the reporter of the very consistent with his radio programs when it comes to boxing. Reporter of the year, Tabiso Musia, well done. Won an award on Friday. Congratulations, Tabiso. <laughs> and to there's a left hook. Asimatin. Again, you'll watch this. You'll enjoy this. Again, I'll emphasize quite over and over again. Asimatin hardly ever wastes any punches. 
He's very patient in everything that he's the, he, he, he does. Okay, step back, step back, step back, step back. Well, he is the South African uh, super middleweight title holder. Won that against uh, Cohen Ray. Actually had it in his first loss. It was uh, on the undercard okay. of uh, that Caspian Jovest. Pretty ugly uh, fight. Might be maligned in some quarters, I guess, but uh, it does okay. give... Boxes a, a bit of shine that they might not have got, uh, not for for celeb names. Well, Casper came with something real, really good, and they still hunger mm. okay. Okay. for more Stop. from Casper. Stop it! You know you can yeah, box him. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Round two again. Then uh, uh, Kabanga, because he doesn't like Jeppy, he has to, in more ways than one. Move that head from side to side and step on the inside and let go. Okay, break, step up. And he is having success. He's tagged Bellum a couple of times already. Okay, step up. You can hear even some murmurs from the crowd still encouraging Willem to just keep jabbing. He can win this fight with just the one part. Oh, he lands a good right hand. He's got him. Okay, break, seven. Just did seven. not press the advantage there, uh, Willem. Okay. Still don't Stop know it. why Willem hasn't tried even one uppercut with a Kabangu falling forward almost all the time. Okay, tell us about it. Stop it. Stop it. Well, his nickname's The Predator. Perhaps we could take something from that, showing a little bit of patience, waiting. Certainly in the first round, you could see he was trying to get some reads. Okay, and uh, not he might have a little more success with his range later in the bout. Counter left, landing on that occasion quite well. And that's uh, something for Kabangu to think about when he does try and come inside. That short left hook from uh, Velem. comes out fighting. That uh, throws a wild left hand. Okay, play. So you see almost all the time Kabungi is happy in these situations because then okay, Venom can't do so much damage. He knows all about Asimatler's left jab. Now, Willem has found don't a way break, break, to nullify right? the don't jab. Break when I say break. Please, don't break. Getting that warning now from referee Lamja holding. If it's excessive, he'll lose a point. Okay, step up. Uh, 
There's that left hook. Now it lands. Okay, break, up. Little punch to the back of the head when they clinched there. He might get a warning okay, of his break. own. Sometimes you get the impression that Kabango is coming in just to clinch and not to actually land or do damage. Break. Break. Stop it. Yes. Okay, okay. Stop. You don't hear the bell, right? You don't hear the bell. Push it. Please, don't push. Pull down. Don't push. Okay, step back. Last 10 seconds then coming up in round uh, number three. Well, the scoring is almost uh, one-sided really. The man who's been lending the effective point scoring punches is Velem. Well, ringside I speak of former champions. Here is a man, Yekham Mama Totep, Vuyani Pumu, IPF Tuna Featherweight Champion from 1994 to 1995 a record number of those titles too in terms of the defenses he beat Teddy McKinney he was known as the carousel kid a lady screamed at the carousel I bet IPF champion of the world a humble man solid solid fighter the beast Some success for men in this round. And also just an air of frustration from uh, the younger men. Masibulele, Hawk Makepula, former champion of the world, former Olympian too. Amazingly, the man who inspired the name for Hawk Makepula, welcome the, the Hawk is also here. We are on number four, Grant. Okay, break. Pupilists, past and present, watching on ringside. This is the hottest ticket in town. Now, Velem starts with the left hook. He did land. But... That lead hook for Kabango has been his okay, most effective okay, punch. Okay. He's landed it several times okay. already. It's amazing though, Grant. He can set it up beautifully with just the left jab. If he doesn't become over eager to throw the right hand, he can set all his traps just behind that left hand. And switch his attack to the body. Okay, it's about Stop. patience for Asimate Willem here this afternoon. There it is, just the jab. Kabamu is going to jump, he's going to do all kinds of moves, but just stop him with the left jab. You are tall, you are bigger than him. More authority with, there it is, right there. sensing a moment to capitalize but more of a, a slip than anything just off balance for a moment says that if you can get past uh, 
this particular challenge. He wants Rowan Campbell next, wants to defend his super middleweight title against him. It would be a superb fight. It would. And he's fighting an opponent who has previously been in the ring with Campbell. He says, as a matter of villain, if you're not going to knock me down, I'll do it myself. <laughs> and the crowd comes alive. This is welcome, the Hawk Nita, IPF champion in 1990. He beat Fabrice Bani to win the title. Welcome Nita, the Hawk, defended the title six times. The very same in a featherweight title that, that Vianney put fought for and won. Here is a chip from the previous round, Krat. Just on those final exchanges, this is uh, Bellum slightly off balance, but just those final exchanges, entering, finding, finding his flaw. Probably the last 20 seconds of the round. So if you can recapture that as we uh, head into the next round, and perhaps you can have Kabangu in, in trouble. We reiterate, never been finished as a pro, Alex Kabangu. Asamate Velem is a work in progress. He's got a solid corner in terms of training. So the whole thing then, yes, he's got a good jab, but he jabs and stays in the same position. So it's about the movement then, the ring craftsmanship, the use of the feet, because he has to jab and then just be out of range, shift to the left, shift to the right, so he jabs, okay. stays in one position, so when Kabango falls, well, he still finds him in the same position. So it's like his jab is not effective, and then he gets caught by those wild swings from Kabango. So it's jab, get off the mark, jab, and not be at a point where you can get caught by those wild swings from Kabango. What is in Kabanga's mind? Because he would be aware that the fight is slipping away from him, having not really landed any point scoring punches so far in the fight. I think that's evident in the, a tactic we're seeing throwing those big punches. He doesn't feel like he's going to play catch up from this point. He's not known as a prolific finisher. Just uh, two of his six wins coming via stoppage for Kabangu. Oftentimes, when you land a jab which is as effective as Vellum's, you have the ability then to throw a big right hand behind it. But there it is the jab and the right hand, and another jab, even as I speak about it. Vellum smells blood. It's the jab, front. It becomes a stiff, straight left hand. He puts everything into it, lands it with so much authority. Last 10 seconds of round number five. End of round number five. Lock it. Lock it. Lock 
Lucky. Lucky. Come in the ball. And it's the rematch coming up next after the conclusion of this fight for the South African strawweight title. Yangani defending against Kuse, but for now, it's the super middleweights in action. Here's a look inside the locker room. Angile Yangani being put through his paces as is Sia Kuse. Well, round five was certainly another one in the bank for Velum. Oh, yeah, he's gone into round six now with even more confidence. He's found the perfect game plan. Throw more than just the one jab. Double up on the jab. You'll break Kavango's rhythm. Okay, okay. I will not. No. Yeah, I'm going to end the You are doing now you are holding, right? Right, please. Yeah. 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 Okay, break Sabak. Sabak, 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 Sabak. Okay. Okay, Sabak, Sabak. Kabam is going to love the left hook. He throws one. One, one, not enough of a punch that's simply working for him. Okay, okay, step up, step up. Okay, okay, okay. Mm -hmm. I, I, yeah, 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 yeah. What's up? Okay, break. So even the sound Stop of up. that punch, you know it's been thrown with an open glove. It has to roll those punches for the right hand to be effective. I'm talking about Vela. Okay, stop that. Stop that. Stop that. Stop that. Step back. Let's go. I see Willem Jabbing trying to switch his attack upstairs, downstairs. Now I throw the right hand to the body as well. Okay, stop it. Mm. Crisp jab catching his opponent again. Okay. But as you pointed Stop out previously, up. Up. a work in progress. Yeah, just 22 fine. years Stop of age. Up, <laughs> Ringside in red and ever present in boxing in this part of the land. Her name is Joy. A number one boxing fan, not for today, not for yesterday for many, many decades, still going strong, ever present in boxing tournaments in this part of the land. Lovely, lovely lady. This is Joy. Now, Venom's last five fights are his only five fights. He is coming off uh, Successive stoppages. The two men he's failed to stop, both from the DRC. Interestingly, uh, his second fight came against Jackson Masamba. Alex Kabangu's okay. second fight many years ago also came against the very same Jackson Masamba in 2018. Round number seven, you're talking about Velem, the son of Thelma and Fundile Velem. 
Two siblings, Zian and Atenko Osi. He's listed his favorite punch as the upper card, yet to throw one today. <laughs> So he's forgotten about his most favorite punch, and the situation is so well set up for it. When he's not fighting, Kabangu is a personal trainer. The son of okay, okay, Adolf okay, okay. Mutombu Watch your head, right? and Chiale yeah, please, Magu. Head, yeah. What's that hair? If you look at the kind of work that Kabangu puts in uh, per week in the gym and the miles he puts on his legs okay, as well, hey, 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 hey. it speaks to his durability. Ah, okay, right. Yeah, he says around about 40 kilometers shift. per week. Yeah, that's right. For the bigger fighters, that's, that's getting up there. And he says he loves to fight, he says I'm born to fight. Now he's fighting now, Kabangu. One big right hand to the body mm. from Velen. That's a good punch. Right on the belt line. And another. Now let us now be on the lookout for that upper cut then because there's an opening for it. Definitely. Yeah. Ah, this crowd has been yeah. asking him to jab for the better okay, part right. of the fight. So each time he jabs, you hear the roar of approval from the crowd. After chirping, the Venom drops that, la that uh, left hand. He holds it by his uh, belt line. Doesn't bring it straight up. Well, for Venom, this is the first time in his pro career he's ever ventured into the seventh round so it perhaps is a consequence of that Kabangu taking him deeper than he's ever been before from round seven where Velen began to spot some openings to go to the body but as you also noticed Pumlani for the first time dropping his lead hand just a little and that's what we said this was going to be a good test for him and it's turning out that way We are in round number eight, scheduled for ten. There is the double chair working effectively for Vela. For Vela, with the legs. He's okay, so flat-footed. He, he does so it. many things Stand correctly, but, let's go, let's go, let's but go. he's in front of you almost all the time. Hardly ever gives any effective angles with the shifting and the movement. But again, it, it, it's a work in progress. This is his sixth fight he'll learn. <laughs> Took up boxing in uh, primary school in Tanzania. Hook from a 
Kabangu. But it does land because Venom is stationary in front of him. Okay. Okay, brace up. <laughs> there it is. This is with that uppercut, but at least he's uh, digging a little into his arsenal now. Sometimes it takes the opponent to remind you. Maybe <laughs> it's Kabangu who should throw the uppercut. <laughs> if there's one thing that Kabangu is not struggling with, it's conditioning. That is another uppercut and a good right hand to the body. <laughs> Actually, a very good workout for Asuna. Last 10 seconds of round number eight. Two. Five. Four. Three. Two. One. Okay, break seven. There's another pound in the book and two to go. As the Matle Venom outworking his opponent, but Alex Kabangu showing that durability that he's known for, proving once again that he's uh, almost impossible to put away. She was meant to uh, fight against the Zimbabwean Freeman Mabongwe in December last year for the uh, vacant ABU super middleweight title, and that fell through. But it's certainly going to be a, a lot of good things in his future, that's for sure. Round uh, number nine. Again, I spoke about conditioning. You could tell the both of them in superb condition physically. Okay, Bryce Abbott. All afternoon, Kabanga has tried to close the gap, the distance between himself and Venom, with not much success, though, because he wants to get on the inside to do damage, throw some body punches, hasn't been able to get close enough. Okay, Bryce, <laughs> goes back to the jab and now have that right hand to the body. Finds room almost all the time. Just beneath that elbow of a kabang. Okay, 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 okay. Don't hit at the back of the head, right? You, you don't hit at the back of the head, right? Yeah. Also now, Asamatla Velem has settled to just doing enough in terms of work rate. At the end of round eight, the nose of uh, Kabangu just bloodied as uh, an accumulation of jams begins to, to tell. Okay, break some More holding from Kabangu. Okay, break seven.
It's wild. It's the left hand. It lands from Kabangu. And he's been the distance 11 times in 13 fights, says Kabangu. And it looks as though it's heading that way once again. But they begin to throw leather. One round remains, and there's one fighter who is clearly up on the scorecard. Ripping that right hand to the body. Another stiff jab landing. Following that up with a clean left hook. This is the last round. Look out for shake hands after this, you know? Thank you. Perhaps needs to work on just exiting the exchanges a little bit better, does Willem, because he, he often doesn't have an opportunity to land follow up shots with Kabanga clinching. Shake hands. Thank you. This is the tenth. It's the final round. It's the last round. Okay, okay, Brian. And just a quick yeah, reminder of some great boxing coming up on your world of champions. Errol Spence, Bud Crawford. We have that fight live for you in the world of champions. And I know from the side of Golden Club, mm. negotiations are at an advanced head, stage. For Kevin Lorena to step into the ring, there's the reason details, more details on the path that Kevin Lorena is going to take in the coming weeks. I know Rodney Berman and Kevin the Smith working hard behind the scenes. This is the last round, this is the final round. The pattern has hardly been altered. And Kabangu, despite all the punishment he's taken, continues to march forward. Oh, he hasn't wobbled. With the jab. Okay, okay, press him up. There's press so up. much time left in the round. He's bleeding from the nose, as mentioned by Grant earlier on, Kabangu. Bellam's got to go back to the jab. Stiff, stiff left hand. It will work. He's under 90 seconds remaining. Uh, he's leading with the right hand. Wrong move. He's got to go back to the jab. Yeah. There is the yeah. punch. Okay, okay, stop up. Just under a minute remaining in the last round. If there is one man who knows how to hold on for dear life to protect himself. <laughs> you're pushing, you're pushing. Look, 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 look. Can't be desperate again. You are pushing, man. Don't push. Yes, sir. Now he's putting everything into the big blows now. Oh! Asimathe Velem trying to close the show. It's just seconds remaining now. And his corner is calling for that overhand. Ten seconds. Mm. End of the fight. The final bell goes. There can only be one winner. Brave, brave effort by Alex Kabanga here against Osemata Velem. 
He was looking to close the show in style. Velen deserves to hear that final bell. Now it's the first time in his career fighting 10 rounds, so that's another tick in the box. He's passed that test with flying, flying colors. Credit to Alex Kabango as well for showing real heart and durability. We knew he had that in bags. Still yet to be stopped in his pro career, despite the very best efforts of the young up-and-comer, Asamatle, the predator, Velum. In fast and furious action in the closing exchanges of this fight. Frustration at times for Venom with uh, Gabangu clinching persistently. And he staggered him inside the final 10 seconds but couldn't put him away. But he's a problem for the current South African super middleweight champ. They love their boxing here. They love the action from the previous round. The ICC is, is getting packed by the minute as fans continue to flock. And remember, the main event, the IPF tuna flyweight tied to fight. The man from uh, Utensane, the defending champion, the special one. Sivenati Nonjing up against the man from the Philippines, the challenger, Reggie Suganov. That's later. We await the final numbers from the three judges at ringside. Strange things have happened in boxing, but. <laughs> There's only one winner for sure here this afternoon. Brave, valiant effort on the side of uh, Kabangu. If there's lessons to be learned, he's the one who taught Helen many lessons here in this bout today. I thought he might have stolen one of the earlier rounds whilst Bellum was still just trying to find his range. He caught him, just clipped him with a couple of uh, lead hooks. So perhaps in 99, 91, but in, in, in any case, I think we're expecting a pretty lopsided scorecard. I see Lucky Makeleni is getting into a position to give us the final scores as the party continues inside. And the warm-ups continue in the dressing rooms for the next fight. Siakolo against Nyangani is going to be our next fight. South for Nyanga. And Kuse, of course. Makeleni is in position. Ladies and gentlemen, our three judges have scored this fight as follows. Judge Sipiru and Geba scored the fight 190. Judge Ellen Matakane 190. And Judge Madison Kile 192. Ladies and gentlemen, the winner by unanimous. Decision is Asema de Velemu. And surprisingly, winner by unanimous decision. So in his uh, third fight against an opponent from the DRC, a third decision for Asema de Velem. But he's on a, an upward trajectory at the moment. And we're expecting big things from him. Been plenty more exciting fights in the future as well. He, doesn't mind it.
Welcome back to the ICC. It is Rumble Africa Boxing Promotions. It's the uprising on your world of champions. We are live from the ICC. It's the return of World Championship Boxing as we continue to bring you the fights of your life. It's packed. They've come out in great numbers. Earlier on, of course, we saw some former world champions ringside. Whether you're talking about Mateus Andile Sitinile, or the ace sitting ringside, of course. Boxing fan, big supporter of Orlando Pirates Football Club as well. The Premier is here, Oscar Mabuyani. Jack is also here, enjoying some fine boxing this afternoon. And many numerous dignitaries have come out enjoying superb boxing here at the mecca of boxing. I know other provinces love to debate it, but even as it stands, the Eastern Cape leads when it comes to that. Let's take you back then to the official way in. I've mentioned earlier on uh, in terms of the conditioning of the fighters, very impressive. Uh, no fighter came in overweight. No fighter had to run to make the weight in the last minute. It was all smiles, won't be, when the two step in the ring this afternoon. Here is the tale of the tape. Siakolwa is 24 years old, made his pro debut in 2018, whilst Bangile is 28 years old, making his pro debut in the year 2016. Unbeaten in the last five fights, of course. Look at the reach then. It also favors him at 174. I'm talking about Bangile Nyangani. Kuse is south home. There it is. Seven fights for Kuse. Four wins, two losses, a draw, and two KOs. 15 fights. 13 wins, just a single loss and a draw for Bangile Nyangani with the 40% no count uh, ratio. South African's throwaway title fight scheduled for 12 rounds. Here is Lucky Makeleni. Ladies and gentlemen, our next bout is the South African mini flyweight title fight, which is scheduled for 12 rounds of action. First, let's welcome into the ring the challenger from M. Danzane Siakolwa Kuse. Siakolwa Kuse. Yes, he is from M. Danzane. That's what he's saying now. But he's born and bred in Duncan Village. You talk about former IPF champions. Well, Duncan Village gave the world. Bulelo Boti, IP champion, 1995-97 in the Bantamweight division and also in the featherweight division in the year 2000-2001. Here is the man, born in Duncan Village. Here's the challenge. Well, the song that is chosen for his ring walk, it's a Bob Marley song coming in from the cold. from M. Tata, Bangile Nyangani. Ashindot, yet M. Tata, Tata. He's from the Eastern Cape province again. Well, he stays in Johannesburg now, but he's born and bred in Tata. He's the champion. Bangit Nyanga. Trained by Alan Tawil. Says he loves the weather. Comes into a great sound. You see, that's what I was talking about, Grant, when it comes to the record. You pick your tune. God spells South African music, reggae. You wait for the tune until you walk.
Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching live Rambla Africa Boxing Promotions here at ICC in East London in the Buffalo City Metropolitan. This is the South African mini flyweight bound scheduled for 12 rounds of action. Brought to you by National and Eastern Cape Development of Sport, Recreation, Arts and Culture, Parks and Tourism Board, La Grotto, Olegato Holdings, ICT Choice, Buffalo Toyota, Ayalewe Constructions and Projects, Faka the Projects and Managers, and Super Sport, the World of Champions. Introducing our officials, ladies and gentlemen, our three judges are Tandi Lengodwana, Lulama Mcha, and Stembele Tomi. When the ball rings, the third man in the room ring is Simpiwo Mbele. Our timekeeper this afternoon is Zola Naki, ringside doctors Dr. Nopkej Mane and Dr. Zondi. And the fight supervisor is Mr. Paramile Jacobs. And now, introducing our boxers, ladies and gentlemen, Fighting out of the blue corner, wearing orange and blue shirts. He took the scale at 47.55 pages, with seven fights under his belt, one draw, two losses, and four wins. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the challenger from M. Tanzani, Siakon His opponent, uh, ladies and gentlemen, fighting along the red corner, wearing a black and white shirts. He took the scale at 47.40 pages, with 15 fights under his belt. One draw, one loss, and six knockouts. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the current reigning champion from M. Tata. Oh, I'm Tambo District Municipality, Bangile Nyangani. This part, ladies and gentlemen, is sanctioned and approved by boxing, South Africa. Boxers. Referee Sipio Mbini, experienced ring official, with the final instructions for the two boxers. Obey my instructions at all times. Good luck. Say again. The South African throwaway title is at stake. Bright, colorful trunks is the challenger, the unorthodox South Pole Cruz calls himself the demon. Fight is scheduled for 12 rounds. I really love a good rematch tonight. Yangani winning this uh, SA title from Kuse back in mid-2021, so about two years ago via majority decision. And he's had uh, two very dominant defenses since.
We apologize for the break in commentary. We are back live. Our engineer is still working on it. Well, both these fighters really getting after it in round one. No feeling out process and none needed because they're already familiar with one another having been in the ring before so you'll say this is round number 13. yep <laughs> well it was a majority decision when last they met there was a scorecard and anomaly at uh, 114 114 whereas on the other two cards, it was fairly lopsided favor of Yangani. Just consulting with his trainer, Alan Tawil, who uh, has spoken frequently about the fact that his fighter is um, top 15 ranked by all four major governing bodies. He's in the house, promoter of the year, Ayanda Matiti, Baba Boxing Promotion. Box. He's a boxing fan. Surprised to see him folding his arms. He's very animated around the ring most of the time. This is round number two. The oh. glove did touch the canvas. Yes, no? A referee doesn't mm. think so. He knows the game. Nyangani knows if he leads with the right hand, he'll catch stop, stop, who's stop. coming for That's a push. Impressive Correctly like ruled Impressive. by referee Simtuembin. Now he starts with the right hand, Nyangani. And there really appears to be a small welt under the left eye of Kuse. It's the right a, hand, Grant. Yeah, just a bit of swelling there. Nyangani knows. He just leads with the right hand. Yeah. And uh, Kuse drops the left hand. Ah, oh, good exchange. Here in round number two. Well, you at the weigh-ins live. I watched it on a stream. And I thought from all the fighters that weighed in, these two men were just in impeccable condition. Unbelievably conditioned, which I think is a good thing for Kuse because there were some question marks over his state of mind and his readiness when these two last met. Nyangani, quick hands. He just doesn't throw one punch at a time. Puts them together. Oh, that eye is troubling him. Yeah. That eye is troubling him. It's the left eye. Now, oh, Pusa comes with the combination. That right hand that gives him trouble is landing all afternoon. Kuse. Nice combinations from that unorthodox southpaw stance. He's decided I'm going to fight you on the inside as well there. Uh, uh, Kuse. Last 10 seconds of round number two. Stop. Yangan is moving so well. And he's taking the fight to Kuse. He did in the build-up to this that he would be looking for the stoppage. He wants something big as he uh, is trying to target the WBA Intercontinental title. 
with a big and impressive victory here over Kuse. At least they got the right equipment there, Magazola did it yeah. uh, in Kuse's corner that ends well to work on the swelling. Furious action from this second round. We can't tell from the angle whether they did touch the canvas. Now both men certainly had their moments. And that moment when the two arms, a consequence of Orthodox versus Sub four. Round number three. We scheduled for 12. Nyangane, the South African strawweight champion, defending against the Kuse, who believes that this time around is going to emerge victorious. Mm. Has power in his hands, Nyangane. His uh, previous defense against Gaveni and Kwateni in September last year, he dropped him with a beautiful counter right. I love the way Kuse is working the body. He digs that left hand intelligently downstairs mm. and he finishes up on top. Oh. There it is. There it is. Again, he digs the body, finishes on top. Challenge Kuse. He has to be worried of that right hand from the champion. The champion has found room for it. Nyangani can hardly, hardly miss with the right hand. And he's wearing evidence of that, his kus on that left eye. Kusa surprises me though. He is moving to his left. Yeah. He is moving into the power mm. punch of Nyangan. Uh, ah, he's fighting on the pressure now. The challenge at Kuse. Bangani. Bangile is throwing some good right hands, even in the middle of those exchanges. He's moving the wrong way, Grant. That right hand will catch him all night. He's got to go to his right. He has to. doing something that is out of character, dropping his guards more and more. Got to keep those ends up. What a round. The two Eastern Cape boys are throwing down and the crowd love it. Kusa actually lost his uh, first shot at the South African title, a unanimous decision loss to Alisa Magusha back in 2019. And then Magusha went on to lose to Spasisa Butler and Kusa handed Butler his first loss with a fifth round KO that was in December of 2019. Then here's the thing, COVID came and he didn't fight for such a long time until his first defense, which came against Yangani, and that's why I say reportedly wasn't quite in the right state of mind for that particular fight and lost his title. This is the rematch, and it is living up to the billing. We are going into round number four, Nyangani. The defending South African strawweight champion, the son of Nonene. Upper 
against Siakolo Akuse, the son of Tabisa Akuse. Oh. It's a typical oh. strongly fight. Great intensity, superb ring craftsmanship by both boxers. No quarter given by either. Just get the sense that that jab from the hip from the champion is just a little labored. Also, Kusa can see it coming. Yeah. I think Kusa has made some really good reads. I just love the work rate from both fighters. Lovely intensity in this fight. Throw weights, they can keep it up. Yeah. For the duration of the fight, it's not speaking combinations from Kusa. He's bleeding. He's bleeding that left eye, then he's opened up, there's a cut. Kusa is bleeding. Courtesy of that right hand break, 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 from a break, break. Bangile Nyangane, the champion. The thing is, for Kuse, he's walking straight into the firing line. There's shots that are being fired on the right hand side. He's left. He's walking straight into those shots. Get out of the firing line. You see, there is Nyangani, even tries the lead right hand. He knows he'll find Kusa there waiting for it. That's the correct angle for Kusa. As long as he stays there, he's going to get caught by the right hand. Last 10 seconds. Another good round, a little more calculated from both men. Young guy named Apparently, yeah, unbeaten in his last 10 fights. Nine wins and a draw over that period since the last of his professional career, which was back in 2017 when he first fought for the uh, SA title. Lost to Spomanda Atlanta. Right here at the Island ICC. Here's some action from a competitive round four. Please send us your tweets on hashtag SSBoxing. Gift Bolo sends a tweet to hashtag SSBoxing. Bangil is dominating Kuse. I see him defending this title again. Come Bangile, best round. Round number five it is Gift Bolo. Yangani has previously uh, got in some sparring with the current IBF champion Nonchinga, Sivanati Nonchinga. He's a high level fighter, he's the current SA champ. You have to give credit to the trainers of both these fighters. The work that they've done is clearly evident almost halfway through the fight. Mm. The 
It's that right hand that lands again. There's room for it. Kusa has the tendency of dropping his left card. I'm a bit surprised the both of them aren't given so much to the art of body punching. Both notable headhunters. For now, that jab is falling short from Nyangan. Combinations, Puse, combinations, the challenger. Putting them together now. This is impressive from the challenger. Suits of the attack, right hook to the top of the head. Reference in Pembina is called time. It is not clear why. We are going to see if we can hear why he's called time. Bango Ben. He acts a dendal. Like that. Acts a dendal. Acts a dendal. He's talking about the head part. Time in. Oops. Kuse is cut above the right eye, he's bleeding. Stop. Both men wearing damage on their face, Kuse more so. Wonderful, get another look at that headbutt. Lands the one, two. Another really good competitive round in the corner of Kuse. Now have to uh, deal with that cut, which will continue leaking throughout the fight. They've done the best patch-up job that they can in between rounds. Box. And so we hit round six of 12. Ah, I was going to talk about the movement, and then the referee was in the way. And it's quick feet. Stop, 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 stop. Okay. That's a good call by Mbini. Just put them on the way out. That's Jakuse. Well, when I say the champion uh, Nyangan can hardly miss with the right hand, as the fight progresses, you see then that Kuse can hardly miss with the straight left hand. He's cut the ball both eyes, Kuse.
at close coaches. Whether Kuta or even Nyemden has to go down straight to the body. Red, 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 red. Through the fight, round six, scheduled for 12. The South African throwaway title at stake. Bangla is the champion. Black and gold trunks. Kusa in those bright colored trunks is the challenger. This is the rematch. Last 10 seconds of round six. Kuse finishing the round four. As advertised, halfway through. Still to come. Up next, the SA female Pantamway title fight schedule for 10 rounds. Melissa Miller up against Regin Fortain. Biggest height disparity on the entire bill. For Melissa Miller, much shorter of the, uh, the two fighters. Hoping it's fourth time lucky. Having lost the three previous fights. The lady boss in black, the promoter. Real Africa. It's Rumble Africa Boxing Promotions. Round uh, number seven. It's a stumble, no, no doubt. Gets tight by the right mm. hand. Mm. He knows there's a home, there's room for that right hand. Needs to throw it with more authority though. Kuse, combination. Ah, Mangile is forced to hold. Gets tapped on the inside. Another right hook from the challenger Kuse. It's Kuse now. He swings, he misses wildly with the left hand. Under a minute left in round number seven. The Kuse did come out in this round and immediately put the pressure on. Mm. Showman stuff and the crowd are getting behind him. They're gonna have to dig deep. It's gonna come down Play. to conditioning. Play. 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 
Reminds me of Norman Savane in hands of Stone Lee Dwarbus corner up against Michael Johnson at the carousel. Says we need our second win. Lidwaba says, Yes, coach, I've got the second win. You need that now. Has to kick in. Leading from the nose profusely. Mm. The challenger still throwing punches. Cool, sir. Now they are singing. Now they are chanting. Now they are dancing at the ICC. This is boxing. But cool, Miss Opa. Even the Premier is up on his feet. We're getting ready for round eight. Lois Former CEO of Boxing South Africa, Oscar Mabuyana, the Premier of the Eastern Cape Province. The beast, here come of the Tomato. Former IPF champion of the world. South African throwaway title is at stake. The defending champion is Nyangani in black and gold. The challenger, South Pole Kruse. It is electric in here, and it seems to be Kruse is feeding off the crowd. Ooh. He's picking his punches intelligently now. See him try that right hand uppercut on the inside. When I say super sport bringing you the fights of your life, this is what we're talking about in your world of champions. Break, 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 break. Well, there seemed to be just the slightest momentum shift after round three, I thought, after Kuse had taken that initial damage. And he's been able to keep that momentum. I love how they control the both of them, the intensity. There is room to take a break. There is room to breathe. The problem is when you try to breathe, the opponent puts pressure on you. Mm. You know how many punches Nyangani threw on the inside and he missed? And Kusa made him pay. have to try and conserve any oh. combinations from Kuse. Right hand, straight right hand. Bangila Nyangani, the champion. Watch your head, watch your head, folks. Another warning for Nyangani. I think that they're now in the game. It happens almost always. South Pole, Orthodox, you get that. Even with the feet, they'll get entangled sometimes. He's loading up on that left hand. Good save. Forces Nyangani to hold. You always get a sense crunch that only one hand can turn it around to Nyangani, that right hand. No Maganjan, Colin Nathan, is waiting for the big moment. Hot box team, the IBF champion. 
Sive Nati Nunchinga getting ready for the main fight against Suganov. They're enjoying the action now here. Benny Paleman is also in town. What's the corner with Colin Nathan too? Round eight action. Just evading that big punch, but that time landed with the left. And there were a few instances where Nyangani was caught with a crisp one two. And Kuse has shown us the demon in him, living up to his nickname. This is round number nine, scheduled for 12. Kuse, born in Duncan Village, now staying in Mtansani. Nyangani, born and bred in Mtata, now staying and training in Johannesburg. doing correctly is fighting to be on the inside and do damage with that straight right hand as long as Kusa drops the left hand there's room for it as he closes the distance Nyangani is becoming even more lethal right hand after cut Kusa gets out of the corner those two punches swings of oh, the popping and the weaving beautiful move now ring craftsmanship using the perimeter of the ring because he knows at close quarters Nyangan remains dangerous. You see fatigue setting in, but you also see the superb conditioning of the both fighters. Both men have their hands low at this point. Pumele La Kafu. Just sent us a tweet on hashtag SS Boxing. Says, I have Kusa winning the fight. I think he's ahead by five rounds to three in my unofficial scorecard. Hashtag SS Boxing. Pumele La Kafu. I'm going to show you a piece of paper because that's exactly what I have. Three rounds to five for the challenger. Putting the punches together now. Cool, sir. Into the last seconds of round number nine. Go. Little clubbing right to end the round. I thought it would be hard to follow the that villain fight and the performance from he and Kabangu. But this bout is exceeding all expectations. Let's say, love a good rematch, right? As we watch this action, Fundo on hashtag SS Boxing says, Kuse coming very strong on the seventh round. Gabriel Kali says, mm. I'm Nigerian and I like this Kuse guy already. Man is a born fighter who is not afraid of getting punched. Dini mm. Kogahos says, Kuse must raise up his hands and block the right hand if he wants to win. He is coming all right. Oh. Santa says, Kusa will drop this Nyongeni guy. 
Amnonja Hulu in him tata. It's hashtag SS Boxing. We are in round number 10. Keep those tweets coming through. Remember Nyangani in the black and gold trunks of the defending champion. Kuse in those bright, colorful trunks is the challenger. Now he's so potent, dropping his cards, dangerous move, risky move. Kuse, keep your cards up. He's the younger of the two men is uh, Kuse, and far fewer professional fights, but he does have an extensive amateur background. And there's massive, massive swelling above the right eye now of the champion. There's the right hand. It's been landing all night. Kusa hasn't found a way to get away from it. Defend himself against it. He knows it's coming. But he's choosing to drop his guard. I wonder why. Yes, he's making the champion Bangani Nyangani miss. But keep your hands up. You have to protect yourself at all times the golden rule of this sport. When you're talking about South Coast from this part of the land, there are so many who gave us fantastic boxing. Whether you're talking about Patrick Kuga, Kabula Vabaza, Mzugi Sekali, and Kusa is joining that list of numerous unorthodox fighters from this part of the land, the Eastern Cape Province. Stop, stop, stop. stop. Well, time being called by Don't the referee here, to cold. talk to the corner, the Alan Tawil. Time in. Shouting instructions to Box. his fighter. Last 10 seconds of round number two. Break. Go. End of the round. There's something Masil says. Kusa needs to stop Nyangeni, otherwise he might not take the title. He's too confident from Muzolo in Kronstadt. Brian Mkaza says on hashtag SS Boxing, Tumlani, I'm loving the boxing. I'm with Kusa on this one. I love his technique. Muzolo calling for the finish. Neither of these men have been stopped in the previous instances. They've uh, been defeated, which is just three losses between them. On hashtag SS Boxing, Kanya says, Kuse has been dominant. He needs to be more focused now. I can't. We are deep in championship rounds right now. I'm torn between saying to Grant at this stage in the previous fight, still wasn't clear who was winning. Correct. And that's why we did see one scorecard that had them even. Remember, this is the rematch. Yeah. 
Lovely hand speed from Siakola Kulise. Kuse. He's smart. He knows. He gets in close. That's why he takes a breather for a couple of seconds. For Bangi Lenyangan, he knows the game plan has to be effective punching on the inside. He's really lethal when he gets close, particularly with that right hand. I still think it's anyone's fight in this penultimate round. Under a minute remaining in round number 11. This was the penultimate round. Kusa Jeff, left, right hand falls short. I repeat, the champion Nyang and he knows what will work for him, but he has to be on this inside. Good straight left hand from the challenger Kusa. He just finds the best of energy and throws nice combinations, which on a couple of occasions now, Nyangan has not been able to find. I was just about to say, just appears to be the fresher of the two men. He's finishing the round strong again here. Kuse. It's Kuse. He believes. We are called. Oh, the entertaining contest. Heading into the final round. And they look as if they'll go the distance as they did when they met almost exactly two years ago. And only taking the title off Kuse then. He's defended it twice since. Looking for his third defense. But the challenger has come up with some really, really good moments. And when he's landed, oftentimes he's landed combos. On hashtag SS Boxing Blue says the pace of this fight is unbelievable. <laughs> Center of the ring, they touch gloves, which signals the start of the 12th and Don't final go. round. And from our position of luxury, not having to make a call of consequence yet, we wish the judges the very best. It's gonna that type of a fight. Oh, Mangele coming forward. He looks so good when he does this. He looks really, really good. Mangele Nyangale, the champion, steps forward, puts his punches together. Oftentimes, Kusa just can't handle it. Hasn't done enough of that here this afternoon. Champion Nyangan. Well, the message from his corner might have been that if he seeds this round, then he possibly has no chance on the judges' scorecard. Well, if you take the 12 rounds they fought before, they are just about to go 24 rounds.
big left hand. Kuse right on top. Punch is falling short. Right hand, nearly a good punch. There is also a sense inside that if the caller Kusa stays on his feet. He'll be the new South African throwaway champion. Oh, both fighters missing wildly. Final 20. Seconds remaining at the ICC. Rumble Africa promotions. Last 10 seconds of the 12th and final round. Bangile Nyangani, the South African champion. Who's the challenger? There goes the final bear. Hashtag SS Boxing Thomas Luka says, I see a trilogy here. He also says Kuz are leading comfortably, but it's careless. <laughs> Brian and Kaz on hashtag SS Boxing says, the hand speed of Kuz is still devastating. Well, Kuz certainly celebrated with more conviction. In fact, Alan Dawil went over to his boxer who was reluctant to even release his hand as an indication that he thought he had won the fight. Which says a lot. from an absolute barn burner that left hand from Kuse was money oh the champion in the early rounds put some damage on the face of the challenger he wore it and he turned the tide certainly the middle rounds belong to Kuse has he done enough on the judges' scorecard? Lost a decision when they met back in 2021. Did Kuse to relinquish his title, his first defense? Yagani making his third defense of the SA Strawway title. Might have to try and recapture it. We we'll wait and see. I'm looking in the ring. I see Lucky McKellen with some pure mini. Going through the scorecard, fight supervisor Pakamile Jacobs is already in the ring with the yeah. belt. Any moment now. And usually when the ring announcer has to be taken through the scorecard, it suggests they could be split. Let's see. It's not. It's, it's not. not. Yeah. They did take time pouring over it. Yeah. It's not. Lucky McKellen is in position. Ladies and gentlemen, can I ask the CEO of Eastern Cape Park and Tourism, Jonathan Jackson, to join me into the ring to crown the child champions? Can we ask Jonathan Jackson? 
CEO of Parks and Tourism uh, to assist me to crown the champion and also the executive mayor of our Tambo district municipality, Okansila Mesuli Ngondwana, to also join me into the ring. Ladies and gentlemen, our three judges have scored this fight as follows. Judge Lulama Mkia scored the fight 109-119. Judge Tembele Tom scored the fight 112-116. And Judge Tandim Godwana scored the fight one one two one one six ladies and gentlemen let's welcome the new eastern south african mini flyweight champion sia kola who he is the new south african strawweight champion Sia Kolwa Akuse, a unanimous points decision. Top, top performance here. In a sporting way, the former champion hugs him and leaves the ring. Terrific performance, great performance from South Pokuse here today. Well, it's redemption for the 24-year-old. Welcome back to the International Convention Center. We are here in East London. This is the maker of boxing, Rumble Africa promotion. It's the uprising. It's the homecoming of Sivan Atinonjinga, the defending IPF junior flyweight champion against Reggie Sogana from the Philippines. To help us get there though, we have a bumper jam-packed card. We have seen some great action this afternoon. Well, there is more to come. The party 
is well and truly underway. It's entertaining, it's brutal, it's beautiful, it's boxing. We call it the noble art. Melissa Miller up against Saradin 14, the South African female bantamweight title fight. This fight is scheduled for 10 rounds. Well, at the scales, they look in superb condition again. I've talked a lot about the conditioning of the boxers coming into this tournament. There were no corners cut in preparation, in readiness. You could see the evidence yesterday. The way in was held right here at the ICC. They never had much to say to each other, even at the way in for you will know the story and Grant will take you through their record of how many times they have fought. This is the tale of the champ. Miller is 37 years old. Sharadine is 28, making her debut in 2012. Miller making her debut in the year 2013. Now look at the reach. The reach really favors uh, Sharadine them at 164. Well, what about their records though? The records tell an interesting story. 22 fights, seven wins, 12 losses, three draws and one KO for Miller. 16 fights, 13 wins, two losses, a single draw, Three knockouts with a 19% knockout ratio for Sharadin Fortain. Ladies and gentlemen, now let's welcome our next bound. A female bantamweight bound to schedule for 10 rounds. Brought to you by Rumble Africa Boxing Promotion. First uh, into the ring, let's welcome the challenger all the way from Houghton Province. Melissa Miller. Born and bred at Eldos. Eldorado Park, attention to. Still stays there. At Eldos in extension to. Melissa Miller. Honey Bee. Well, she was the 2018 SA Boxing uh, Female Fighter of the Year. That's an award that went to Timangele Hanebe this, this year, 2023. Massive, massive height and reach disparity and uh, a disadvantage for her. So there is a clear route to victory. And now, ladies and gentlemen, let's also welcome uh, into the ring, uh, opponent. From Esimo, Sharadunan for day. Born in Simo, still stays in Simo. Oh Lord, oh Lord, if you don't do it, it just says I want to make my mother proud for as long as she lives I want to make her proud sometimes I get this when I say like this I say trains at Luca in your boxing club in Congo village anybody know that I'm only The daughter of Samendra Forte. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a female bandam weight bound for the South African title fight scheduled for 10 rounds of action. Brought to you by Rumble Africa Promotions in conjunction with National and Eastern Cape, Department of Sports, Creation, Arts and Culture, ICT Choice, Ayalewa Construction and Projects, Fagad Projects Managers, Buffalo Toyota, Eastern Cape Premier's Office, and Super Sport, the World of Champions. Our officials for this bound judges Lula Mamcha, Ellen Matakane, and Tandi Ngodwana. The dead man in the ring is Mandisin Kile. And now, 
Introducing our boxers and ladies and gentlemen, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing blue and white trunks. She weighs 51.95 kgs with 22 fights, 7 wins, 3 draws and 12 losses and 1 by means of knockout. Ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome the challenger all the way from the Houtang province, Melissa Miller. Here, opponent, ladies and gentlemen, across the ring, fighting around the red corner, wearing black and red trunks. She tipped the scale at 52.7 kg with 16 fights, 13 wins, one draw, and two losses. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the current reigning South African Bandamway champion, Sheridan Fonte. Boxers. Ten two minute rounds for the ladies. Referee Killer with the fight. final instructions to the board fighters. Seconds. Good luck. Andy Sim Kile is the third man in the ring. Box. And uh, against Forte. A Forte's title on the line. And from Lani, it's not a word you hear too often, even in a sport like boxing, where fighters are fated to perhaps cross paths more than once. A tetralogy, a fourth meeting between these two and who's been dominant it has been the reigning champion for Tain. she's won all three previous meetings they first met in 2014 for Tain was a comfortable winner over 10 rounds then in the second meeting in august of 2021 it was a majority decision two judges had it in for Tain's favor one had it drawn it was rather contentious and melissa miller's team protested that they fought only a few months later a more convincing victory that time around for Fortain. She has that ability almost always, Melissa Milan, to try and force the action on the inside just like this. It's been the pattern even in their previous fights, which is coming forward, trying to land combinations, and of course, Fortain's ribs showing the temptation is almost always there for Melissa Milam to work the body. Fortain, she's tall, her ribs are showing. It's an open target. And I think because Fortain expects Miller to attack the body there, is the potential here for feints to come into good effect. Fainting to the body right. and putting right. that big punch upstairs, which she can do. Go. out the first round Miller as expected having success with those shots to the midriff of her opponent Patane's last uh, outing is actually a split decision loss to Malawi's Ellen Smwaka as she attempted to claim the IBF Africa bantamweight title losing effort there Fortain had though previously beaten Samarka on points uh, in 2017. Uh, the meeting in May this year didn't go her way. It was a fairly competitive bout though. Two judges had it quite close. 
This is round number two. We shuttled for ten. Fortain against Miller. Fortain, the defending champion. Miller, the challenger. Fortain trying to be more and more dominant behind the left jab. Right. I think she has to throw it out more frequently, a little bit more volume with that jab. Miller's got to realize, or she's got to make Miller realize right. that there are consequences to trying to get inside. Just a bit surprised that Miller hasn't tried to work the body a little bit more. Yep. She's also head hunting. There you see everything on top. Right. No matter how often you say in boxing to fighters, stop head hunting. The eyes has eye, the head has eyes. It can see, it can get out of the way. The body can't, it stays there. You, you, it can hardly miss. Fighters don't like it. That's why Melissa's fight is combinations to the body. I'll fight to score this for the three judges of ringside. Go! Victories after those back to back defeats to Fortain. See that uh, defeat to Mangele Hadebe. Another fighter that she's actually faced three times previously. It does tend to happen in uh, some of the women's divisions that are a little shallower. That you'll see fighters crossing paths many, many times. This is round three, shuttled for ten. Nice jab there for fourteen. Also, you get a sense that. Uh, Melissa knows all about her for tens, Jeff. Now and again, she's not really there to be hit or caught by it. Hey. Safe to say that as a shorter fighter, Bonas is on her really to come on the inside and make it a hey. fight. Hey. Watch your head. Watch your head. Right hand, Miller. Well, of the two, Fortain, the, the local fighter, I guess, from Seymour in the Eastern Cape, about 30 kilometers north of Alice. Recognizable location. Great. Great. There are, of course, challenges if you are a taller fighter, fighting a, an opponent much shorter than Great. you punching down and now and again you there isn't a big target really to aim at well, these two minute rounds really fly by and still not much between them. Oh, 
Oh, that's what's in the offing in the supporting bout in Flant Latija. He's well loved in these parts. He's just been shown on, on the big screen. That's why there's a slight rise in the decibel levels here at the ICC. Late replacement, George Candulo. Number four. Mila challenging 14 for her title. Remember, rounds are two minutes. This fight is scheduled for 10 rounds. pinned up against the ropes momentarily. Go. I have to put the protection back on. Yeah. So Shradin is going to go back to her corner. It's back on. Go. And it'll give you some kind of indication in that melee where the punches were landing. Miller has to make this a brawl. It's the only way. And also, because they've fought so many times, she knows what can work. The thing is to execute that game plan and execute it successfully. Miller says her role model is Clarissa Schill. And Clarissa Schill is one of the finest top, top performers. Yeah. And she also says she loved the Noni Tang, one of the best ones to ever do it. Noni Tang, yeah? Stop! did have some success coming in that looping over and right this is where she did some of her best work as well some of the protective gear was dislodged in this moment I believe Logic would dictate that the, the fighter who's lost three times would be because of a consequence of that just a little hungrier. And Miller is taking the fight to the champion. Now they have to stop. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Reverend Killer did point that he's noticed. <laughs> Let the protectors go on. Ah, on the inside there, for 10 tries at right hand of a cut. thing is if she can't keep her at bay with the jab and and Miller is going to continue to come inside successfully then that's a good punch for her and set traps cuts. as well because yep. you know she's coming Columbia against Michael second to none South to none had a similar problem Columbia was much much shorter than him set the traps set the traps set after the fight 
I knew he was going to come. He knocked straight right into my left hand epithet. That's, that's the patience and that 14 needs. Oh, a stinging shot from Honeybee. mark of the bout difficult to say which of the two fighters is in the ascendancy although on that evidence Miller having uh, more success at least in this previous round that she comes into this fight with winning momentum and her opponent has come in on the back of a loss and that sometimes that can mean something even if just psychologically halfway through we're on number six to the podium. There it is. She puts them together intelligently, Miller. granted a very good pace good work rate two by both fighters Miller is doing well in this round I think she's identified what's working for her she's sticking to it she may be easily winning this round I'm yet to see an effective blow from the champion Shuridin 14, in, at least in this round. <laughs> Bell goes to end round number six. We'll try and listen into the corners just to hear some of the instructions. This is round number seven.
Canelo clearly not given to the art of throwing just the one punch. He loves them in punches, loves them in combination. Well, for team. First fought for the uh, SA Bantamweight title as a decade back. She lost that effort to the Kiwi Manila. It's actually her first loss, of which she's only suffered two in uh, 16 previous fights. Hey. A really good hey. record. 13 hey. 2 and 1 draw. Almost always, Miller works so hard to get on the inside. But as soon as they get to close quarters, she's unable then to use that advantage and throw more combinations to the body. Yeah, this is where she wants to be, on the inside and then work the body. Now getting into rhythm. Less than seconds of round number seven. Champion goes to work. Go. It remains a good competitive fight. This meeting comes after fairly lengthy layoff for uh, for both of them. Melissa Miller hasn't been in action for 10 months. For for 10, it's more than a year. Oftentimes, that is caused by the lack of openings. Yeah. Great, great. Don't hold me. Which is why you see these two meeting again. Because usually when a, a trilogy is 3-0, and oh, you'll never see it again. And such is the tenacity of Miller that she's worked her way back to being the, the obvious challenger for the title. Ten jabs misses with the left hand. Now she seems to have picked up the pace uh, for ten. Champion. Mm, sitting on those punches now for team.
Well, it's taken a little bit of time, but it seems like in these later rounds, the team's really started to find her range. Manage the distance just a little bit better. This is the penultimate round. It's round number nine. The fight is scheduled for ten rounds. For ten, the defending champion, Melissa Miller, is the challenger. Great. Miller had some good success in the middle rounds. It seems like Miller has picked up, uh, Patien has picked up the pace a bit. for a stoppage in this fight uh, Grant you may not get it none of the two fighters are known to be big punches no not at all Miller has a single stoppage win on her record for 10 just three of her 13 wins have been by stoppage now she is loading up like she, like she has <laughs> throw the overarm right hand and consistently she's missing with it. The more effective option, a better punch would be the uppercut. Heading into the final round again, getting value for money at the ICC. fighters to the center of the ring they touch gloves this is the tenth and final round now is going to be how the judges have scored this fight not an easy fight to score no not at all Charadin Fortein is the defending champion Melissa Miller, the challenger. Stop. What a story it would be if at 37 years of age, Miller was able to capture the title against her longtime rival.
Well, just under 30 seconds remaining now. There from uh, the challenger Miller. Last 10 seconds of the final round. Well, this one, Grant, will go the distance. Forty rounds between these two women. It's a long time to share the ring. Some decent action in the final round of this uh, 10 round SA Bantamweight title fight. And a difficult contest to score. The closest of the three previous fights coming in August of 2021. That was the second time they met. Two judges then scored it for Fertain. The third had it as a draw, which prompted an immediate rematch. been coming up against each other for the better part of a decade after first meeting in 2014. And we wait to find out whether it will finally be Melissa Miller's day. As we eagerly anticipate a show from Inchland Latuja. Such an unbelievable talent. He, uh, we're taking on a late replacement from Malawi, George Kandulo, who appears at least on paper to be outmatched, but this is a sport when anything can happen. Lucky Makeleni. Gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen, can we please welcome into the ring Mrs. Grand South Africa, Mrs. Asa Kemtikaka, the executive mayor, Yeche Babolo Sichi Umama, U Princess Fagu, Kunye, the Eastern Cape MEC, Human Settlement, Umamu Spokas Lusiki, they will crown the champion. Thank you. Ring announcer Lakima Kileni introducing some VIPs from ringside to come into the ring to assist in the ceremony of a handing over the belt Lucky McKelleney is in position he's ready Ladies and gentlemen, this is a split decision. Our three judges have scored this fight as follows. Judge Ellen Matagana scored the fight. 96-94-14. Judge Lula Mamka scored the fight. 94-95 Mela. And Judge Tandingo Duana scored the fight, 93-97. Ladies and gentlemen, the winner, by a split decision, and the new South African Bantamweight champion, Melissa Miller. She's done it. Grant spoke about it. Age ain't nothing but a number, Melissa. 
finally, finally. She cuts the belt. She's the new South African female punch up my champion. Melissa Miller, a split points decision victory. You talk about here for her. She's done it. Congratulations, Melissa. Welcome back to the International Convention Centre. We are in East London. This is Rumble Africa Promotions. The main supporting bout to come up before we get to the main event. They came in nice and early. They love their boxing. They've been thoroughly entertained here this afternoon. Well, it continues. There's more boxing still to come from the ICC here in East London. Places popularly known as the maker of boxing. Spoke about here a little bit earlier on. An ever-present boxing fan ringside. What are you talking the ICC here or the Orient Theatre? She's the, she was with us at the official way in even yesterday. George Candelo up against Tlantla Chirka. It's an international fight that is shot for 10 rounds in the junior flyweight division. At the way in, the late replacement Candelo with his trainer, George Kosi, arrived and they tipped the scales at 47.5 uh, 0. Yaris Chirka came in at uh, 48.50 kilograms. He had rated by many very highly. One for the future without a shadow of a doubt. Kandulo is 31 years old. 31 years old. He is 23 years old, making his professional debut in the year 2018. Kandulo made his professional debut in 2016. Slight reach and height advantage for Kandulo. 17 fights. Five wins, 11 losses, a single throw, three KOs with an 18% were knockout ratio. Nine fights, eight wins, only a single loss for a man who has two KOs 
which gives them a 22% knockout rate. I'm talking about Nsansa Keha. Let's go to our ring announcer now. Lucky Makeleni. Ladies and gentlemen, this is our main supporting bound of the afternoon. Brought to you by Rumble Africa Boxing Promotion. First, enter the ring. Let's welcome. All the way from Malawi, George Kandulo. Born and bred in Palaka, Malawi. But now, staying and fighting out of Hilbro in Johannesburg. Behind him, his trainer, George Kosi. Well, he is naturally a straw weight. Uh, called up on uh, short notice to face Zinflan Latuka after uh, Lito Dante from the Philippines was not able to fulfill his obligation for this fight. A few months back, though, did get a win to put an end to a string of defeats. And he's making the most of this ring walk. <laughs> he's a father. He's been married for almost eight years. His son is six years old. Shabak. And now, ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome his opponent into the ring. From Tanzania, South Africa, Nanta Chitra. They love him here. South Pokiha. Calls himself Kilimanjaro. Says no water, no chair. From him, Tanza. Who can climb this mountain? Love this football. He's a fan of Polanda Pirates Football Club. He's a father, he's got two daughters. Oh, Amke, who's nine years old. Aumi, who is two years old. Ladies and gentlemen, this is our main supporting bout of the afternoon brought to you by Rumble Africa Boxing Promotions. You are watching us live here at East London International Convention Center in the Buffalo City Metropolitan in South Africa. Our sponsors for this round is Eastern Cape Parks and Tourism, Buffalo Toyota, National and Eastern Cape Department of Sport, Creation, Arts and Culture, Project Managers, Olegado Holdings, Lagrato, and Eastern Cape Premier's Office and super sport of the world of champions. Introducing our boxers, and ladies and gentlemen, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing red trunks. He weighs 47.50 kgs with 17 fights, five wins, one draw, and 11 losses. Ladies and gentlemen, from Malawi, let's welcome George Cardulo. His opponent, ladies and gentlemen, fighting out of the red corner, wearing a blue and white trunks. He tipped the scale at 48.50 pages with nine fights under his belt, eight wins, one loss, and two knockouts. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome from Tanzania, South Africa, Nanta Mount Kilimanjaro Chikha. This part, ladies and gentlemen, is sanctioned and approved by IBF and Boxing South Africa. Boxers!
remember guys to keep this clean at all times. May the best man win. Shake hands. Good luck. Experienced referee Alan Matekane. He's the third man in the Hold ring. Sato Tiha lines up against Orthodox Kandi. The fan favorite Tiha is fighting for the fifth successive time at the East London ICC. Actually, fought here a couple of times in front of no crowd after the pandemic in 2021. In terms of the stance, problems for Kandulu led mm. too far apart. If it's this in teams, though, oftentimes when boxers get older, they tend to do this. Let him go. Patient, patient start by both boxers here. Yeah. We've only seen one stoppage in uh, four fights so far in this build. But ten rounds to work. Kandula has never been ten rounds before. Not once, not twice, definitely three times. Kiha has missed with the left hand of the cut. But you see how Kandula falls forward, leading with his chin. Soon a shovel will pick him up. And when you are the more credentialed fighter as Tuha is and you were scheduled to come up against an opponent that ostensibly would have been a more competitive match the onus is still on you not to take your new opponent lightly and to go on and put on a show put on a clinic Oftentimes, prospects are charged on how they win. Yeah. Stop. Too much action to dissect from round one. <laughs> round number two. No, 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 no. Let's go. Fast start this time around by both fighters. <laughs> it's a slip. No, no, no. Oh, that's a foul. Kandula doesn't seem to be hurt. Yeah. 
Now and again, you see the feet coming together. South Pole again, South Dogs. Happens all the time. Going to work, digging the body with the right hook down in the basement. What did you have for lunch? Kandu, Chita is asking questions. Well, someone's bleeding. Should have come all that it is. It's Chita who's bleeding. Yeah. Top of the head, behind the ear. Right and top. It looks rather nasty, and I'm wondering whether it actually came from a punch or not. He's got this nice right hook uh, that he throws to the board. You get up from that unorthodox. South for stance. Oh no, oh no, oh no, oh and he no, finishes no. his combinations. Let's go. <laughs> Malawi is a country that has produced numerous fighters, one of the most popular though. Isaac Shalamba. That is that right hook from Kiha. Ten seconds remaining in round number two. In between rounds, we're able to try and identify what caused that damage to the right side of Tika's uh, head. lyrical about this event for the past fortnight or so and a big coup for them to uh, get Nontinga to defend at home let's go let's go box Again, at the start of the round, Kiha goes to work. Ah, <laughs> oh, He tries the right hand, but he has to close the distance first before he tries the right hand. Known to be the best answer against the South Pole. There's many other punches, but the much talk about punch is the straight right hand. <laughs> Kihas Kona seems to have done some good work on the cut and the bleeding on the side of the right hand. Showing patience, 
Sink up, waiting for his openings. He's finding a home for that lead right. Stop, stop, stop. Mambe to Mambe. Kicha needs to turn on the power on the inside. Done some great work on working the body. And a cut is opened up again. distance for Kandula in this fight. Get the sense is a little bit too far. You see, even if he lands, he comes from that side. The time the punch lands, it's got no sting. to winging shots from a distance it's too far out it's overthrowing <laughs> other than that pesky cut it's a, a fairly comfortable outing so far for Kiva. Vaseline applied at some point, oh, it'll nice. open up again. You'll likely see blood streaming out somewhere at some point during this round. Round number four. Well, no matter what happens from this stage, now Kandulo has proven no easy work in boxing. Replacement opening, last minute fight. He took it, flew to Joburg. He is in round number four with the immensely talented Kicha. Well, that's the thing, he has a losing record, yes, but of the instances where he's been on the wrong end of the result, he's very infrequently been stopped. Himself, not a prolific finisher. Sometimes boxers like Kira needs. They need these kinds of fights. Different style, different mentality, different opening to the one that he was going to face. that was really excited and Kiha came into the ring with not really singing and they haven't really taken to this fight. They waiting on him to turn on the start. Yeah, it's a lovely 
teammates now. How oh, they come to life. Not much time left in the round if he wants to capitalize, try and score the knockdown. more convincing from the favorites. Four rounds in the book. Tika actually comes into this one having faced four successive Filipino fighters as the crowd ramp up the volume because Sivanat Montenga is on the big screen. Ready to defend his title against the Filipino phenom Reggie Suganov. His promoter is in the camp with him. A couple of journalists from the Philippines have traveled with him. I'm talking about Suganov. The challenger, that's how confident they are. This is round number five. Lovely hand speed there from Kiha. Five to seven for eight rounds. They made a fairly slow start, but he seems to be growing into the fight as it progresses. I love what uh, Kandula is doing. He's been caught by a couple of uppercuts. He's trying to protect himself with the guards in front of him, but through the uppercut, through the guard, the uppercut still learns. <laughs> there, oh. right there, right there. He's got his guards up. It's a porous, porous defense. <laughs> now and again, you see Kandula loading up on the right hand, not effective. There's a referee in this fight, Alan Matekani. You hardly see him. It's been that clean. No holding, no clinching. The referee has hardly broken his sword. Just under 20 seconds remaining now here in round number five. Shot. 
that's definitely a home for. That's lift up a cut. Love to add another KO to his resume. Just the two finishes in his eighth win so far. This is round number six. Kiha against Kandulu. By some really extreme punches, it hasn't really been shaken. Yeah, now he throws the good right hand, goes for the finish. His legs are jelly for just a moment, I think, with the, the end of the fourth round. But other than that, pretty steady going, showing good durability. Just, a, just, just for a moment, a smile from Kandulo. Awara sometimes in the ring when boxers get caught and they smile. <laughs> Largely because of that which happened to Thomas Hands of Gaines Marvin Hegler in that epic fight that lasted three of the best rounds in international boxing. You see a, a terrific start to the fight. Oh, 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 oh he's out! He, he doesn't need to count. He has to stop the count. Seven. Bring the magics yes. in. It's all Nine. over. What an upset. Wow, it's a gigantic upset. A replacement opening. A last minute replacement. The man born and bred in Malawi. Fighting out of Hilbert Johannesburg. Has stunned the ICC here. George Candelo. Big, big right hand. Stops his, he's right on top of us. He's responding to the physicians. They're asking him to stay on the canvas. I'm talking about Kicha. Here is the punch that ends it. Big of our oh. right. And that's all she wrote. He's out before he hits the canvas. There. He's out. That is an unbelievable upset. Bear in mind that Tika's only previous loss before this was against the excellent Kosunati Joy whilst he was still a teenager. And he's now been defeated a one-punch KO against the unheralded Malawian, the late replacement. You saw halfway through the round a smile from Kandulu. And then he pulls the trigger. No wonder she's in tears. Totally unexpected. You don't play boxing. This is an upset. This is a huge surprise. In this sweet science, Expect the unexpected. Candulo, he's done it. Grant mentioned that on paper it looks like a mismatch. Well, it took one punch to rewrite that narrative. Disbelief everywhere. Stunning, stunning defeat. For, 
she's not the only one. There's many of them crying uncontrollably ringside. Kiha is the local man. Kiha is the favorite. Much loved fighter. They adore him here. He's up on his feet. This is good to see. I'm talking about Kiha. Yes, they've removed the, the boxing boots, but he's on his feet. Well, just a few days ago, Tiko was preparing himself to challenge for the vacant WBO Intercontinental Junior Flyweight title. And just a few moments ago, he was crashing to the canvas on the receiving end of a mega punch from that man, Kandulo. A shell-shocked ICC. Disbelief abounds. The concern is in this corner. Man. Absolutely crumpled him. He threw that with bad intentions. There was that smile I spoke about. Only 30 or so seconds beforehand, maybe a minute. And I was going to say, maybe because he was thinking to himself, I'm still here. You thought you might have put me away by now. He can't believe it. Masibulele, Hawk Makepula. Well, in the ring, there is proof. Without his boxing boots, yes, but yeah, this is good to see. He's okay. Let's go to our ring announcer, Lucky Makeleni, for the official time of the stoppage. Ladies and gentlemen, our referee, Ellen Matagane, stop the fight in one minute. 57 seconds in the sixth round. And the winner by knockout all the way from Malawi, George Kandulo. He stunned the boxing world here at the ICC. Johnny Bravo on hashtag SS Boxing says, wow, what a knockout. The winner is George Kandulo with a big, big right hand. Don't go away. The main event is up next.
This is my story. This is his story. This is the keeper of our story. This place is engraved in the memory bank of my being as a compass of strength as I pioneer. The new, the unknown. And dance at sight of the gifts you bear. My story will echo over the plains of the Karoo. My spirit will give flight and fly free over this land. To birth hope, destiny, and dreams. My salvation and freedom are buried in the deep Amatola mountains. To where it all started. This is where I journeyed. I am home. I am the flesh of my forefathers, the adventurers, the brave, and the free. I praise Mother Africa for her riches, her coastlines stretching like hope, echoing secrets, memories, and golden dreams. We hold hands, we cross rivers and bridges. We obey the heeds of the land and this holy soil. I stand unapologetic as your shores crash and bring in the tide of tomorrow, signaling the call of new horizons and opportunity. This land who has birthed me is beating to the drum of tomorrow's dream, clearly and distinctively harboring, protecting, and celebrating the colorfulness of her people. Let us move to this beat in unison. My child, my beloved, you are the legacy of the land, reigning, reveling, rejoicing. You are the full force of nature moving over the plains and the hills of this land. You are strong, you are bold, you are home. Wam Gile, welcome home. This is where your story starts. Eastern Cape, yours to explore. We are at the ICC Arena. It's time for the main event. The IBF Junior Flyweight title scheduled for 12 rounds. The challenger, Reggie Sugano from the Philippines, up against the reigning defending champion, Sivan Nati Nonjing from South Africa, M. Tansani. It's the battle of the undefeated. Two fighters had no trouble in making the way, I remarked yesterday when I saw this man, Suganov, his card, his rib, he's ready. I spoke to him, he's really confident, tells me, I'm happy to be here, absolutely delighted for this opportunity. I said, What's your fighting style? He says, Wait until the afternoon tomorrow, I'll show you class. Nanjinga, si Venati, also had no trouble making the weight. He's the defending champion. He's South Africa's Boxer of the Year, of course. The tale of the tape. I mentioned two unbeaten fighters. 
Chirunov is 25 years old, made his professional debut in the year 2018. Sivenati Nonchinga, 24 years old, making his professional debut in the year 2017. He looked there, last uh, recent results, the both of them, 5-0. You know, the truth is, the both of them have not tasted defeat. Suganov, 13 fights, 13 wins with 4 KOs with a 31% knockout ratio. Sivenati Nonchinga, 11 fights, 11 wins with 9 KOs with an 82% knockout ratio. We are ready. Our ring announcer is ready. South Pole, Lucky Makelele. Ladies and gentlemen, before I call the boxers into the ring, let me acknowledge our visitors all the way from Ireland Monk Boxing Club, which plays a great job in assisting our clubs around Buffalo City. Let's welcome them in our midst. Monk Boxing Club from Ireland. Also, ladies and gentlemen, let me welcome into the ring our promoter of the day, Mr. Terrence Ndutu from Rumble Africa Boxing Promotions, or Mr. Ntangani, so the Director of Operations from BSA, Board Director Mr. Sodo and Mr. Khadu. Can they also join me into the ring? Followed by the chairperson of the Eastern Cape of the National Boxing Promoter, Mr. Ayanda Matiti. The Executive Mayor of Buffalo City and the Speaker of Buffalo City to join me into the ring. Chairperson of Boxing South Africa, Mr. Lutalo Jack. And lastly, ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome into the ring the SG for the Eastern Cape ruling party, Mr. Nugai Tobi. The Executive Mayor of Oar Tambo, Mr. Ngondwana, also to join me into the ring. And lastly, ladies and gentlemen, let's all welcome the Premier of the Eastern Cape, Mr. Oscar Mabuyane. Leadership from Buffalo City. And now, ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome into the ring the challenger for the flyaway IBF World Lightweight Certified. All the way from Philippine, Reggie Sugnanov. Here is the challenger. Reggie uh, Sugnanov. Men from the Philippines. Only four months and six days he last fought. Formidable, formidable fighter. And now, ladies and gentlemen, it's time to welcome into the ring the reigning IBF World Light Flyweight title. From a chicken farm, Tantana, Eastern Cape, South Africa. Sivanati, special one, Nongjinga. He's gonna come in in style. He's a local man. He is the reigning, the defending, the undefeated. IBF Junior Flyweight Champion of the World. CV Nanjina. Utun Mapulu. Juan Kalilika. Ati CV Nanjin Gold. My grandmother gave me the name. CV Nanjin.
South Africa's top fighter, boxer of the year. Born in Duncan Village, moved with his parents, Jim Tanzani, and then on to Chicken Farm. His walkout music is so apt. I'm coming home after doing it in a hostile territory, winning this title. He gets the opportunity, which not every fighter has afforded, to come and defend at home. The special one. This is boxing on your world of champions. Super Sport, as we continue to bring you the fights of your life. Ladies and gentlemen, can we all rise to give the moment of silence for one of the Eastern Cape boxing promoters, Mr. TZ Promotions. Thank you. And now, ladies and gentlemen, can we stand Keep on standing for the national anthem of the various countries. Now the national anthem of Philippines. The national anthem of the Republic of South Africa.
gentlemen, this is Rumble Africa Boxing Promotions. Presents the IBF World Light Flyweight Title Fight, which is scheduled for 12 rounds of action. In conjunction with the National and Eastern Cape Department of Sport Creation, Arts and Culture, Fogate Project Managers, Olegado Holdings, Lagrato, Eastern Cape Premier's Office, ICT Choice, and Supersport, the world of champions. You're watching us live here at ICC in East London in the Buffalo City Metropolitan in South Africa. Our official for this round, ladies and gentlemen, our, our three judges is Jerome Lade from France, Amasa Krawi from France, and Gilko from Philippines. And the fine supervisor, ladies and gentlemen, from South Africa is Andre de Vries. Our timekeeper, ladies and gentlemen, is Zola Naki. Ringside doctors, Dr. Zondi and Dr. Nobgemani. And now, ladies and gentlemen, introducing our boxers. Fighting out of the blue corner, wearing a blue and red shirt. He did the scale for the 8.75 kg, undefeated in 13 fights, 13 wins, and four knockouts. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the challenger all the way from Philippine, Reggie Sukano. His opponent, ladies and gentlemen, fighting a the red corner. He took the scale at 48.80 kg, wearing dark gray and orange trunks, also undefeated in 11 fights and 11 knockouts. Ladies and gentlemen, please, I present to you the reigning, defending, IPF World Light Flyweight. Champion of the world, Sivanati, special one, no jingle. This fountain, ladies and gentlemen, is sanctioned and approved by IPF and Boxing South Africa. Boxers. Okay. Shorts are fine, I'm happy with them here. Anything over here is low, everything over here is low, okay? I spoke to you in the dressing rooms, but by my phone was the whole time, but that's exactly the time. Touch gloves, good luck, God bless. Experience, Dion Corte is the third man in the ring here at the ICC. This is the noble art, this is the sweet science. Two well-schooled fighters. Someone's always got to go to unbeaten fighters. This is round number one for Nanchina's IBF Junior Flyweight title. Sugana from the Philippines as the challenger. Sibinati Nanchina from Mtinsane is the reigning and defending champion. I have chills. Well, I spoke a lot to Sugana yesterday told me many things all i could pick up the quiet confidence he's happy with his preparation he's happy with the weather conditions he's seen enough of nanchinga he tells me in terms of the fighting style and that which he wants to do we came into this fight knowing that Suganov is a counter puncher look at how he started taking the fight to nanchinga He's going for power punches. He's putting on the pressure. He wants to test the waters. And believe me, Shuganov is a good, good fighter. So is Nanchina. Nanchina is a superstar, he's quality. He's fighting hard against a mandatory challenger who's wearing the Reyes punches glass. And Suganov is so well conditioned. He gives up heart and reach. 
but he makes up for that with just his physique. Chisels. And he's taking the fight to the champion, as you said. For now, Nanjina fighting on the back foot. Now he's trying to jump. And he is known for having a very active jab, the champion, and that will be one of the keys to victory. Nanjina came down to his hotel room to spend the time yesterday afternoon with me. Emphasize how important it is for him to give a solid performance. Delighted to be back fighting home in front of his supporters. Promised to put on a show. He had watched enough of the tapes of Shuganov. And he said, Bobby CB, I'm prepared to take anything and everything that he throws at me. I've had sufficient time to prepare for this fight. I'm ready. Nunching, I told him. That's how confident you are. Last 10 seconds. Ten seconds of the oh! 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 Even as I speak about the confidence of Nunching, he pulls the trigger. Eight. With the 10 second half count, just gone. End of the round. What a start! It's a massive exclamation point on the end of the first round. A round we had seen for all intents and purposes. He was just trying to get his reads, but he capitalized on them in the closing stages. It's a 10 8 round without a doubt. Let's listen into the corner. Here is the replay. Crunch. Oh. Time to perfection. Powerful, powerful overhand right. Use the jab of the rangefinder and connect it cleanly. Colin likes it. Stay there. Stay there. Oh. Well, he has undeniable star power, doesn't he? Montsinga. He's handsome, he's articulate, he has that X factor. And a win here, especially a spectacular one, could launch his career into the stratosphere. He knows what to do. Still piling on the pressure here is Tsuganov. But now he's worried of that big right hand from Nanjinga. Goes back to the jerk. It's a solid jerk. Everything behind the jerk. When I say it's the noble art, you enjoy the sweet science. I'm talking about the quality of the both fighters. Yeah. Well, if you remember, he set the tone against Hector Flores early in his previous fight, winning the title round two. It was also a massive right hand. Nanjina is alert. There is a sneaky left hook that is now and again being thrown by Shiganov, but Nanjina's right hand is at the right place. Chasing Nanjina. Down is Shiganov. He wants him against the ropes and he takes down so Nanjina with the left hook to the body. Well, we have to bear in mind all Suganov's previous 13 fights have been in his homeland. This is the first time he's fighting outside of the borders of the Philippines. And it could be a factor. 
Nanjina is smart. He is not neglecting the body punches. He digs downstairs, finishes on top. Now and again, goes to the basement and finishes on top all the time. He's even more dangerous fighting off the ropes. Where is that left hook? The sugar of left hook. Okay, take us right to the bow. Stop. Two competitive round two, so they're not have to come out and show no ill effects from the knockdown in round one. Well, he's done just that. Hashtag SS Boxing, Ayanda Nyusa, Nunchinga with the first knockdown of the fight just before the end of the first round. Johnny Bravo, Sivinati Nunchinga is a superstar. Six from the one. Great first round from Sivinati, the special one, Nunchinga. We are in round number three, scheduled for 12. Hashtag SS Boxing, continue to send us those tweets. That left hand. It's usually a little more calculated and considered than this. But there is often from a fighter who has been dropped that, that want to, to return the favor rather than sticking to a tried and tested formula. the jab it's a beautiful solid jab from Nanjinga the champion the ability to throw a straight jab and he turns it to a left hook almost all the time. There. So you think the jab is coming and then he turns it. Yeah. Disguises it really well. Challenge is really piling on the pressure. Nanjinga has not been able to push him backwards. Ah, he makes him pay for the miss. seconds of the round. Our level 
Global Boxing on display, ladies and gentlemen. Hashtag SS Boxing, Tabo Siboka Nunchinga is very smart. to acclimatize. Round uh, number four. This fight is scheduled for 12 rounds. It's a calm forward style of Tsuganov that Nanjinga has quickly, quickly adjusted to. Question is, can Tsuganov sustain this pressure for 12 rounds? Montinga's last three opponents have all been very high level, have hurt him. He's been able to show his durability and resilience through all those moments. Looks very sharp. The both of them look sharp. Mm. One in for a low blow there from referee Duarte. The sharper, better jab comes from Nanjinga. the left hook lands Nanjinga. Soon enough gets through with the right hand. Nanjinga gets out of trouble. Nice movement, intelligent movement, Nanjinga. Just to get out of the danger zone. It's lovely evasive movement, and he always puts punches on the end of it. He starts with the left hook. He needs to give his right hand up. Last 10 seconds of round number four. This is Nanjinga's record. You can see it's a 100% win ratio. He's a young fighter. He's an unbeaten fighter with an 82% knockout ratio. Perfect record. Nine KOs in 11 fights.
It hasn't always been the case, but uh, obviously forces the stoppage later in the fight when he does find it. A few exceptions on his record, though, with that being said. Sugarov is fighting the right fight. There isn't a thing in boxing like the challenger must take the title from the champion. But even then, mm -hmm. with this strategy, this is how he likes to fight, and he's fighting the right fight. Oh, tripped him. It's also at this stage of the fight that Manjinga may have to switch the attack and stop the head hunting and start checking the man in the kitchen. Just throw a couple of body punches. Take away those legs. Keep it up. Jab from Nanjinga. Not many jabs on the side of a Suganop. Oftentimes it changes against the ropes. They start with Nanjinga with his back against the ropes, but just a slight shift. Suganov finds himself with his back against the ropes. Now Nanjinga gets back to the chair. Although Suganov is coming forward, he settled nicely to the role of still being the counter puncher. The special one, Nanjinga, is the defending IPF, China Flyweight Champion of the World, the challenger, Reggie Sugano, from the Philippines. That's well, another good competitive round. And other than the first, with that knockdown, they will be fairly close. Well, you speak of fighters with a perfect record, but look at the knockout ratio then of a, a Suganov at a 38%, although he's got that perfect 100% win uh, ratio. So a perfect record of 13 fights with 13 wins, but in those 13 wins, he only has four knockouts. <laughs> Hashtag SS Boxing. Lula Marafana says, go Sibinati. All sponsors, Nanjinga is sleek. Eddie says, I think Nanjinga is giving his opponent too much respect. He's going to tire when he runs around the ring. Felisa Zanani, boxing at its best. Hashtag SS Boxing on your World of Champions. Well, there was a point against Flores before Montinga re-established the jab in the, the last two rounds where he was kind of coaxed into brawling a little bit more. And he mustn't fall into that trap again. Suganov is looking for a close fight in the trenches and Nanjinga is doing well 
to deny him that opportunity. Colin Nathan had told him in his previous fight he didn't want him to go into the trenches. And that's where he would give his opponent the best opportunity. He used to stay elusive as he has been doing. Every punch thrown by Sugano is thrown with really bad intentions. Nothing soft, nothing to find the range, no jabs, too close. Sustained pressure here. Manjima is making a miss. <laughs> he finds the correct angles to come out of trouble, Suganati Manjima. Even as Suganov is piling on the pressure. In that exchange, Suganov is the one who tried to throw a couple of party punches. We have seen enough for the punches from Manchinga in this fight. Also seems like Grant, Suganov only knows one way to fight. Come forward. All the time. With those big punches, hooking with the left hand, like uh, that, no jabs. Been very apparent. You have some success in that instance. <laughs> big hands. Returns. Big hands. Manchinga. Got to pick up those guards. Got to pick up those guards. Manchinga. I say pick up the guards, but even Shuganov drops his hands almost all the time. from round six. Manjinga sticking to the game plan. Captain Suganov on the way in a couple of times, although the challenger has had success of his own. Oh, a tweet from the big man, Kevin Arena. Such phenomenal ring IQ. Boxing is everything, especially at the highest level. Really awesome to watch and learn from the quick little car. Let's go, Sibinati. And the opponent is no pushover. Kevin Lorena. One of the best to ever do it, Lorena. Sort of Manchina that gives Suganov all kinds of trouble. He just can't nail him down. <laughs> Snaps his head back with the jab. And Suganov continues to stalk. He retaliates. That, that's all that he does. Yeah. Each time he gets caught, he reacts. Each, uh, he's taking a roll even though he's coming forward. That role of being a counter puncher. So each time Nunchin attacks him, he must expect a fight back from Suganov. Mm. You saw Nunchin make adjustments very early, and I don't. No, if I'm seeing the same thing, I'm assuming it. That won't be counted as a knockdown. That's a sleep.
formidable, formidable challenger is Reggie Suganov. Big right hand and Jinga holds to get off against the ropes. That's all there is. Big, big punches from uh, Suganov. He's loading up on everything that he's throwing. But such is his condition that he can carry that kind of power into the final rounds of this fight. So he'll remain a threat. I love how Nanjinga stays on his toes. He needs those legs to get out of trouble like that. Making Suganov miss. Hashtag SS Boxing, Tavis Boga says, I like how Nanjinga is avoiding getting heat and landing effective punches fighting behind the jab. Yeah, he has another look at uh, that slip. It wasn't ruled as a knockdown. Suganov also got a warning for uh, slamming a little punch. It's the first time we've really seen Nanjinga clinch to get out of a, a sticky situation. Spio says this Reggie will catch us by surprise. Munanchinga must finish this fight. Kulagan Mkiza says Nanchinga must be careful. This Reggie is looking for one chance to finish the match. He's willing to surprise us. Round number eight. Fight scheduled for 12. Jeff from Nanchinga. Starts with the right hand and it lands. Nanjinga says, I'm inspired by my daughter. Keep it clean, guys. Keep it clean. Clean. Oh. the son of Pindiwe. Nanjinga and Timba Nikope. And what an influence his father has had on his career. from a very young age, training him at home in the backyard. Literally chasing him down. Yeah. Sugana is a pressure fighter. We also probably have to give a lot of credit to Nicky Butler and the different looks he's been able to give Nonchinga, emulating his opponent, no doubt. He's clearly very, very well prepared for this challenge. Mm. Those are the punches that he needs, Nonchinga. More of the body, body punches. Nanjinga jab. Big right hand, Nanjinga. Suganov takes it well. Thanks for the bell. 
seems like Tsuganov has told himself one thing, I'm going to stop Nanjina. Yeah. Because he's just looking for the big, big punches as the round comes to an end. I'm reading a tweet here on hashtag SS Boxing from Lerato Lights Out here, Jamini, who says, Sibinati is boxing very well, good movement combined with a solid jab and a powerful right hand. You have to wonder to yourself, Kumlani, whether that knockdown in the first round changed the game plan. That's why he's in pursuit. He's looking for the, the stoppage, looking for the finish. Hajim Chura says Nanchina's body punches to slow the movement of Reji. I a bit slim, and Nanchina's jab is world class and has power. Here is another tweet here from uh, Peter Obi who says Reji needs to bite down on his mouthpiece and you'd get a knockout. I get the sense he's already doing that. <laughs> Fans are inside, I can hear them pleading with Nanchina to jab more. Grant, we are in round number nine. There's been just one pet into this fight. Good combination from Nanchinga. Again, fighting off the ropes. Suganov coming forward. Nanchinga, better combinations. Now and again, landing the jab and finding the right angles to get out of trouble and out of range. Combinations from the special one, Nanjinga gets caught with the left hand. All the time, close quarters. Sugonov doesn't throw just the one punch, even though he's missing with most of the punches, but he throws them in punches. And that's what we alluded to earlier, he does have the gas tank to keep up this kind of pace, to keep chasing, to keep pursuing. Suvanov is a tough fighter. Minchinga, smooth, tough, quality, very, very slick. Suganov is also a father. His daughter is only a year old. Jose Jasmine Ray. End of round nine. We are going to have the longest final rounds, but in Nanjinga we trust. Kaya Nivana on hashtag SS Boxing. So look, 
some of the moments from round nine. Huge power punches thrown again. Montinga always seems to have an exit strategy. Round 10. Did fight a very, very close fight to win the title. Razor fine margins with the knockdown in that fight also coming into play. He's fighting an intelligent fight right now. Nanjinga showing his class, showing his quality. Suganov is definitely no pushover. He's a solid challenger. And as long as he stays on his feet, he remains dangerous. We spoke earlier when we looked at other fighters about conditioning. The both of these fighters now have to dig deep. It's going to come down to the preparation, the amount of work put in before today. And to constantly be reacting to be moving backwards like that in the way that Nantinga is, it's taxing. You have to be supremely conditioned. Missing wildly with that left hook, Suganov. Look at Nanjina's jab, just making an opening for the right hand. When he decides to use it, his jab is quality, Nanjina. Even in these exchanges at close quarters, very few of Suganov's punches are point scoring, but he tends to miss with many punches, even on the inside. He works so hard to get to this position and then is unable to land. He's been busy, he's thrown volume, but you're right, his, his landing percentage has been fairly low. And I wonder if you'll agree with me because other than the first round, which is so clearly in favor of Nantinga because of that big moment before the bell, there hasn't really been too much that's been decisive in the subsequent rounds. Mr. Boxing Fight, Fitz says, great fight so far, Nantinga is taking control as Siganov seems to be tiring. Last few rounds are going to be interesting. Hashtag SS Boxing, Chambelit and Janjala says, Nantinga must be careful of this boy. He wants to finish it with one punch. Ayabong Asunji is a special one with great movement, definitely the amount of uh, conditioning training he was going through and his preparation is paying off. Let's listen into the corner. Round number 11, this is the penultimate round. We're in the championship rounds. The IBF junior flyweight title at stake. The defending champion, Sivinati Nonjinga from Mtansani. The challenger, Reggie Suganov from the Philippines. Oh. 
the slick. What did not happen in this fight or what has not happened? Nunchinga doesn't know what type of a fighter Reggie Sovanov is if you push him back. It's all been Reggie taking the fight to Sive. in the corner and the crowd wanted him to put more pressure but intelligently Nanchina didn't it's round 11 it shows even in the side of a uh, Sugarov now in terms of the intensity He seems to be operating in bursts. He can't sustain that kind of pressure that he was earlier in the fight for the whole round. Nonzinga's footwork, his head movement has been so good. Center of the ring now. This fight has not been fought in the center of the ring. Even with Sugano piling on the pressure, last 10 seconds of round number 11, it's Nanjinga who is in control. round for the champion The 12 and final round is here. The IPF Junior Flyweight title is at stake. Some former IPF world champions are right inside the ICC. Former IPF Junior Featherweight champion, the Peace Vianney Pungu, is here. He was IPF champion from 1994 to 1999. I saw Ella welcome the Hawk Nature. He was IPF champion, of course, after he beat Fabrice Benicio in 1990, defended the title six times. To inspire Nanchinga, they are inside cheering him on. Makepula, Hawk is here. Well, you mentioned former IPF champions from this part of the land. How can you leave out Mbulelo Poti from Duncan Village, where Nanchinga was born? Another former IPF champion from the Eastern Cape, Zolani Petel, mini flyweight champion from 1997 to the year 2000. Big right-handed game, the special one in Jinga. 
and you still can see one of the fights there. A part of his X Factor is just the way he's been able to ignite this crowd with one collective voice. And you wonder what the future holds for him. The Rumble Africa promotions have been able to broker a deal. He's now represented by Matchroom as well, so there could be plenty special things on the horizon for this young man. He's a superstar, and Sigan Nancy, the special one. Nanchingo, lost it. But I want to give even more credit to the challenger Sugano. No pushover. Under a minute remaining. Now he takes it to the center of the ring. Just under 20 seconds remaining here at the ICC. Up on his toes, 10 seconds. Nonchinga. Now he's playing to the gallery. It's all over. The homecoming is complete. <laughs> Carried shoulder high by his trainer, Noma Ganjani. Colin Nathan. Suganov raises his hands. This is the homecoming he dreamed of. It's a classy, classy performance from the champion against a very, very game challenger. The emotions coming through. Tap ICC up on their feet now. Sound enough. The respect that is being displayed to this man is deserved. The three judges ringside have handed over this their school cards to IPF fight supervisor. And Raider Bruce is telling up the numbers now. And in a moment. Our ring announcer, Lucky McElhaney, will be in position to give us the verdict. There is his father there, uh, Nanchinga. But this man, Sugano, in a fighting style that doesn't incorporate the jab. They're just piling on the pressure, looking to land the big knockout blow against a sleek opponent, who was never really there to be caught by those big blows. I spoke about his daughter, Asinas. Breakout performance came 10 months ago on foreign soil in Mexico where he grabbed this title 
and his first defense has been a true masterclass showcasing his ability to be elusive and stay focused and we will now learn together the judges decision as these two undefeated fighters go the distance the full 12 rounds someone's O has got to go Ladies and gentlemen, this is a unanimous point decision. Our three judges score this fight as follows. Judge Galvo scored the fight. 116-111. One, 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 one. Judge Jerome Lader scored the fight. 116-111. One, 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 one. And Judge Sakrawi scored the fight. 117-110. One, one, seven, one, one, <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the winner by unanimous point decision. And still, the IPS Flight Flyway Champion of the World. Sibelati, the special one, on Jingle. And still, the premier the noise of the inside the East London and ICC, the absolutely the deafening. The as the hometown favourite comes up victorious. The special one with a special display. And he does it in front of those that he loves most. Now over to Pumlani Msibu, who's standing by with the champion. Thank you very much, uh, Grant. Good time. Um, I'd like to say I'm the special one. This name wasn't given for no reason. Um, but let me give credit to um, Umeya for making this happen to me and also Premier. Let me thank the Super Sport, the World of Champions, for being here and capture this fight. Let me thank my team, Ramul Africa Promotions, for making sure that I achieve my dream. And um, my father, my brother, my uncle, and also Sia Zingelwa, Colin Nathan, the hot box as a whole, Shannon Stradome. Guys, we did it. And I promise you, once again, we'll prevail. Tough fight, tough opponent. What gives you the edge? What wins it for you? Sorry, I beg your pardon? I'm saying it was a tough fight, a tough performance. What gave you the urge to win it? Um, to be honest, I'm hungry. I'm still hungry, even after this victory. I'll go back to the big gym and train again, back to the camp, because the aim is to unify the division. The aim is to take over 108 pounds. So they must know that there's a new kid on the block. The title now is Zolo at the way in, after the way in. As Kum Shengo Gusiege Lege Uchetis Lum. Sibuye Legle Anto, Ea is Zolo, Ben Diteta now. Uh, um, now I'm Steven Atin on Chinga, the special one. Eh, to whom that and the Nangas and the Pukum and the Sungun and the Wood Yamapata. This is me. Abalan del Baco, you are loved here. Eh, uh, all of this Nandi Kulan Buntan of my name. Back in the days, I used to come. This of Bugella Mangi in the Kukuele. Now, I am Olapan and Shanja Yonga and I am. I feel blessed and grateful, Kakulu. And I promise you, I won't let you down. Sibonati, 
Once again, congratulations. Just a quick word from your trainer, Colin Nathan. Perfect game plan, great fight. Congratulations. Yeah, thank you very much. I want to thank Rumble Africa Promotions. We had a few challenges putting this together, but we came together and we made it happen. The first credible world championship in over seven and a half years for South African boxing. The first in over 10 years in East London for a male world title. I mean, it's just incredible, the special one. And I just want to thank the fans for coming out today. This is like one of my feathers in my cap because this kid messaged me when he's 15 years old on Facebook. And the story you well know, he's champion of the world. He defended successfully and still. Um, yes, that's exactly what happened. And I'm grateful that we are in this together. We went to Mexico and took this title. Now we, we successfully defended here at home. So I feel so great right now. Hot box Jimmy, Oscar Mabuyane, the premier of the province. I'm looking at the, f we'll talk about the fight. I'm looking at the support. I'm looking at the fans. This is the maker of boxing. Wow, excellent, excellent stuff. Uh, if there is no seat that can beat your East London on the boxing. And uh, we are really committed as government to make it a point that uh, he continues to defend. We are going to support him. We are also happy just to actually update the uh, boxing family that uh, our nine millimeter Ludomo is doing well as uh, soon he will be coming back home we're quite happy with that with this one the special one you can see this is part of our uh, work to ensure the social cohesion families have got a lot to do we're going through a lot when you have our people coming together like this so happy you can't really give measure on rents and sense the uh, value for social cohesion we've got to invest on this as government we're going to be building in, in, in Tanzania, our boxing maker, the arena there to make sure that all our champs around here continue to serve, continue to help our young people, coach our young people. This is our thing. It then came for you. This was not only for South Africa. This was a world stage, but this was a continental. Only the world champ that we have in our continent. Thank you very much, Steve. You have done very well for us. We are quite happy as people of South Africa. We are quite happy as people of Eastern Cape. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Premier Oscar Mabuyane. I want to talk to the promoter before we go. The organization, the support, the numbers, and then, of course, the performance of Unonjinga today. Cheers. Let's thank the supporters of boxing. We are the maker of boxing. Thank you, Eastern Cape. Thank you, East London. Thank you, South Africa. Thank you, Minister of Sports.